Les verbes du troisième groupe, and we'll see more precisely in this video how to conjugate the verbs that are ending with this ir e thing. So ir, okay, and uh, we'll see that basically they are quite tricky to conjugate. Okay, so let's start the right now. And I thought that it would be more logical to put them, sorry, in two groups. And the first one is actually and logically ire and the second one we are talking about the verbs that will end with oire war or then aire air all right um, my advice for this video is actually to uh, probably make a list on your own and try to learn them by heart because it will be the only way to uh, actually remember them okay but then let's start with the first group ire So the first verb that we'll see is lire, and lire means to read, okay? So, je lis, tu lis, il lit, elle lit, nous lisons, vous lisez, ils lisent, elles lisent. Alright, so, je lis, tu lis, il lit, okay, so... Same form here, phonetical form, but then it's S at the end, S and then T. Then you will get nous lisons, vous lisez, ils lisent. Okay, so this one honestly is not that tricky, so that's the reason why I wanted to start with this one. Let's see now the second one. And it's dire, and dire means to say. Je dis... Tu dis, il dit, elle dit. Nous disons, vous dites, and now you can see the tricky thing here. So it's not vous disiez, okay, as many would think, but then it's vous dites, okay, final S not pronounced, vous dites. Ils disent, elles disent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je dis... Tu dis, il dit, elle dit. So basically here it's not that difficult because I, I'm pretty sure that most of you would actually, without knowing that, try to conjugate it and put, put these forms. Okay, so je dis, tu dis, il dit, elle dit. Then, nous disons. So, so far it's actually quite logical. But this is the tricky thing here. Vous dites. Okay, so remember that, well, in most of the cases uh, at the beginning, you will say, vous disiez, okay, and it's quite interesting because French kids normally, when they start to learn the language, they don't use this vous dites, but then they make this logical mistake, vous disiez, okay, but it's actually vous dites, and then ils, elles disent. Third verb is Écrire, écrire is to write. And then, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit. Same thing here, it's really easy, okay? It's getting normally tricky at the plural form. Nous écrivons, and this is the strange thing here, you've got to put this V here. Écrivons, okay? But then you keep the logic, in a way, vous écrivez, okay, so V is coming here as well, and it will be here for the plural form as well, okay, ils écrivent, elles écrivent, all right, so, j'écris, tu écris, il écrit, elle écrit, nous écrivons, vous écrivez, ils écrivent, elles écrivent. So keep in mind that for écrire, actually, the tricky thing will be to put this V for the plural form. Rire. And it's to laugh. Je ris. Tu ris. Il rit. Elle rit. Nous rions. And this is a tricky thing, nothing between I and O. Rion, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. And keep in mind that here, at the end, 
Okay, you've got this E and T, but if you remember, because I've been talking about that quite many times, you don't pronounce this final E and T, and so phonetically you get the sound RI, okay? Exactly like you have here. RI, 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 okay? So, and then here, RION, RIE, okay? So you get JE RI, TU RI, IL RI, Elle rit, nous rions, vous riez, il rit, elle rit. So now comes the second subgroup. Okay, we're talking about the verbs ending with war or air. And so for the first verb, I decided to take plaire, and plaire is to please. Je plais, tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Have a look here. Accent circonflexe for il and elle, but not for tu and not for je. Okay. Nous plaisons, vous plaisez, ils plaisent, elles plaisent. And that's normally the tricky thing because in many situations, Persons or students will put air here because they are logic and <laughs> in a way French language can be quite strange. So basically you will have to put S here. But then the good news is that it's coming also for vous and then for il, elle. Okay, so this is the tricky thing here. But then je plais, tu plais, il plaît, elle plaît. Well, this circumflex also. Nous plaisons. Vous plaisez, il plaise, elle plaise. Faire is quite useful and we use this verb quite often in French because it means to do. Okay, so let's see how we will conjugate it. Je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. Nous faisons, vous faites, ils font, elles font. Okay, so this one is a tricky one. Well, basically, if you think about je, tu, il and elle, well, this is not really tricky and this is quite easy to make because phonetically it's fait, fait, fait. And then for the endings, it's quite logical, s, s, t like we have normally for the third group, okay? Now, nous is actually quite strange because even if, of course, you put this S here and in a way it's a surprise, but then the most difficult thing that you should uh, keep in mind is uh, the way you will pronounce it because you don't pronounce it E as normally you should, but you will pronounce it like E. Uh. Nous faisons. Okay, it's really f, f, f. Nous faisons. Okay, you see it with e, but then you pronounce it f. Nous faisons. So this is the first difficulty. And the second one is here, because if you look, it's a bit like we had for dire previously. Actually, you don't have this faisé. Huh? If you would be logical, uh, it would go like that. But then it's fait. Okay, so keep in mind these two things are actually quite tricky. The first one here for pronunciation, nous faisons, and the second one here because you write it like that and it's not vous faisiez but vous faites. Okay, and then ils font, elles font. So just for one more time, je fais, tu fais, il fait, elle fait. Nous faisons, vous faites. Ils font, elles font. Okay? This one is important because we use it quite often in French. We've got many expressions that are uh, combined or constructed with faire. Okay? So keep in mind that uh, it goes like that. Faisons and then faites. Mm -hmm. Croire. Croire is to believe and it's quite useful as well. So, je crois. Tu crois, il croit, elle croit, 
And now you've got this Y here. And the sound goes like nous croyons. Okay? Croyons. Vous croyez. And last but not least, look. Il croit. Elle croit. And phonetically here, as we saw, E and T is not pronounced, so you get the sound croit. Exactly the same sound as we've got here. Croit, croit, and then croit. Okay, so one more time. Je crois, tu crois, il croit, elle croit, nous croyons, vous croyez, il croit, elle croit. Okay, so keep in mind that here, when you get this Y and two vowels, one before, one after, it will be like Y, Y, Y. So you combine it with O first, you will get croyons. Croyons. And here, croyez. Croyez. Okay? Boire. And boire is to drink. So it's quite useful. You do that every day, or then at least you should. Je bois. Tu bois. Il boit. Elle boit. And this is the tricky one. Nous buvons. Vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got, well, diff three different stems. So, bois here. So, it will be actually quite easy at the singular. So, je bois, tu bois, il boit. Okay. Then for nous and vous, you've got this stem. So, B, U, V. Then you put the ending. Buvons, then buvez. And for il, elle, we've got a third stem or root, and it's B, O, E, V, and you put the ending, E, N, T. Okay, so you get je bois, tu bois, il boit, elle boit, nous buvons, vous buvez, ils boivent, elles boivent. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate uh, the verbs that are ending with dre and indre at the present form because they can be quite tricky. Okay, so let's start. Um, so the first group, I thought it might be interesting to take a quite common verb, attendre. And attendre means to wait. Okay, so attendre. And for the second group, so the Indre group, we'll see the verb craindre. Craindre is to fear. Okay, so attendre and then craindre. Okay, but then, then let's start with attendre. So, basically, you've got your ending dre. Okay, so the verb is attendre. And the thing that you get to keep in mind is that in that case, you will take air -e away. Okay, so you will get j'attends. And then for tu, it will be tu attends. For il, elle, il attend. For nous, nous attendons. Vous attendez. Ils attendent. Elles attendent. Okay, so if you look carefully, basically you can see that the infinitive form is attendre. Okay, and as I told you, then you take this R, E away. Okay, so you will get this form, A, T, T, E, N, D. And after that, you will basically add the endings. So, for je, it will be S, okay? And that's the reason why you get this attend, like that. So, D, and then you just add this S. For two, it will be also S, okay? Same form. Then for il, elle, don't put anything, okay? So, that's the reason why you get the, the basic form. Then for nous, the classic ending, O-N-S, okay? For vous, you will have E-Z, okay? So that's the reason why you get this attendez form. And for il, elle, you will get E-N-T. Okay, so that's the way uh, that, well, these verbs ending with dre will be conjugated, okay? So you get j'attends, tu attends, il attend, elle attend. Nous attendons, vous attendez, ils attendent, elles attendent. All right? 
And, well, if you think about the verb attendre in that case, let's see the verbs that will be conjugated like uh, attendre. Okay, so répondre, for instance, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, vendre, and other verbs as well. <laughs> okay, but the, I cannot uh, make the, the full list. Okay, so these verbs will be conjugated like attendre. Okay, but then I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, you are expecting uh, some translations here. Okay, so that's the reason why they are coming now. So, répondre, it's to answer. Okay, confondre, to get mixed up. Descendre, to go down. Défendre, defend. Entendre, to hear. Perdre, to lose. Prétendre, to claim. Rendre. To give back, répandre, to spread, tendre, to stretch, and then vendre, to sell. Okay, so these verbs will actually be conjugated uh, just like attendre uh, was conjugated a few minutes ago. Okay, so répondre, confondre, descendre, défendre, entendre, perdre, prétendre, rendre, répandre, tendre, and then vendre. Okay, but as you know, like almost all the time in French, we've got some exceptions. Okay, and uh, of course, the verb prendre, and it's quite used because it means to take, is an exception. Okay, so even if it's ending with dre, well, basically, it won't behave like attendre um, that we, we saw previously. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So, dre, prendre, you get to remember that the forms will go like that. Je prends, tu prends, il, elle prend, nous prenons, and here you can see the difference. Vous prenez, and the last one is quite tricky because it's il, elle, prenne. Okay, so basically you double the N here and it will give you a uh, um, well, different uh, sound here because you get to open the sound so it's prêt. Prenne. Okay, so let's see that one more time. Je prends, tu prends, il prend, elle prend. So if we look carefully, actually we've got, I mean, these forms are pronounced the same, okay? Then we've got nous prenons, okay? Keep in mind that you should pronounce it pre, prenons. Vous prenez, and then the last one, the tricky one, il prenne, okay? Il prenne. All right, so basically remember that prenons, Prenez and then prenne will be different as, uh, well, the forms that we had for uh, attendre, for instance. Okay? And, uh, well, when we speak about prendre, actually, we've got the verbs apprendre, comprendre, entreprendre, reprendre, surprendre, and few others. And these verbs will actually be conjugated as prendre. All right? So, let's see what they mean. Apprendre means to learn, comprendre, understand, entreprendre, begin doing something, reprendre, to take again or to take back, and then surprendre, surprise. Okay, so keep in mind that these verbs will actually be conjugated like prendre. All right, and so now let's see the second main category that we had, and it's indre, and the verb, the example that we will take is Craindre and craindre means to fear. Je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. Okay, so you can see that for nous. Vous and then il, elle at the plural form. It is quite tricky because you've got this g n coming right here and then the sound is craignon. Okay, you get the ny ny sound. Okay, craignon, craignez, craigne. Okay, but then if you remember to put it here, 
So the good news, they say, is that it, it will come for nous, it will come for vous, and then it will come for il, elle, and the plural form. So je crains, tu crains, il craint, elle craint, nous craignons, vous craignez, ils craignent, elles craignent. All right, so keep in mind that ending will be S, S, and then T. Okay, but then phonetically, as you know, you pronounce them the same. Crin, crin, crin. Okay, then O and S, craignons, craignez, a Z, and then craignent, a N, T. And of course, we'll see few verbs that will be conjugated like craindre, and they are atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre, peindre, plaindre, teindre, and few others. Okay, so atteindre, contraindre, éteindre, joindre, Peindre, plaindre, teindre. And so let's see what they mean. Atteindre, it's to reach. Contraindre, force, constrain. Éteindre, turn off. Joindre, join, combine. Peindre, paint. Plaindre, pity, complain. And then teindre, Okay, and so keep in mind that these verbs will be actually conjugated the same way as uh, craindre is conjugated. All right. Les verbes du troisième groupe, and more precisely, we'll see together how to conjugate at the present form the verbs that will end with t r e tr. Okay, so we can start right now. And I thought it might be more logical or easier to divide them in two groups. Okay, the first one would be uh, verbs ending with T, R, E, so it's not a big surprise. But the second one, and I thought that maybe we should put them in a special group. So the verbs ending with être and être. Okay, so A, I, accent circonflexe, T, R, E, être. Oître, O, I, accent circonflex, T, R, E. Okay, so, because basically they will behave uh, a bit differently. So, let's start now with the first one. So, the verbs ending with T, R, E. And for this group, I thought it might be interesting to use a quite useful verb, mettre. Mettre is to put. Okay, and so the concept is that you will have for the singular form, one stem or one root, okay, and it will be M, E, T. And for the plural, you will have actually another stem, another root, and it will be M, E, double T, T, T. And this is the tricky thing if we're talking about these, uh, these verbs, okay? So let's see how it will go. So, je mets... So you can see that now, as we saw, you put back this M, E, T, so the root, M, E, T, and then you add here the ending, S. Tu mets, il met, elle met. Okay? So then now, if we think about that, we should, for the plural form, Put back this M, E, T, T, and after that we will put the ending. And this is the reason why we'll get nous mettons. So you can see that we put back M, E, T, T, and then the ending O, N, S. Nous mettons. Then vous mettez, so in the same way, we keep this first part, so the root or the stem, plus the ending. And then finally, Il met, elle met, exactly the same thing. And this is basically uh, the difficult thing when we're talking about this group of verbs, okay? Just to remember that for the singular form, you will have to use this stem here, and then for the plural, you will have to use another stem. Then the endings will be S for je, 
So you will get je mets s for tu, tu mets nothing for il, elle. So that's the reason why we have this m, e, t. Keep in mind that phonetically you pronounce them the same here. Me, me, me. Okay? Then for nous, you will put the ending o, n, s. But then keep in mind that the stem is different. M, e, t, t. For vous, a zen, same thing, same stem here, and then a n t for il n l. Okay, so now let's see few verbs that will be conjugated like mettre, and we're talking about admettre, commettre, compromettre, permettre, soumettre, transmettre, battre, abattre. Combattre, débattre, and few others. Admettre, and it means admit, confess. Commettre, commit. Compromettre, compromise. Sorry, <laughs> this is my French pronunciation here. <laughs> compromise would be more appropriate than permettre, allow. Permit, soumettre, submit, subdue, transmettre, pass, transmit, battre, beat, defeat, abattre, knock down, combattre, combat, fight, and then débattre, discuss, debate. Okay, okay, so keep in mind that these verbs here will be actually, actually conjugated the same way as a mettre. So as we saw, we've got a second group here in this video, and it's actually concerning the verbs uh, ending with être and watre. And for this group, I thought it might be interesting to have this verb connaître. Connaître is to know, okay, and we use that quite, quite often, okay. And basically, we will have the same kind of situation, meaning for the singular form, we'll have one stem, one root, and it will be conne, like that. And for the plural form, we will have a different stem or root, so connaisse. Okay, so conne and then connaisse. And that's the reason why we'll get the following forms. Je connais. Tu connais. Il connaît. Elle connaît. And keep in mind that it's a strange, strange thing. I know, but you should put here this accent circumflex. You don't pronounce it. I know that. But then if you want to write correctly, you should put it here. Okay? It doesn't come for je, it doesn't come for tu, but then it will come here for il and elle. It's strange, I know, but still that's the way it should be done. For the plural form, keep in mind that we've got our stem here, our root connaisse, okay, so we should put it back here and then add the ending ONS. Nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right, so one more time. You just put for the singular this stem here, and then for je you will add s, for tu you will add s, for il you will add t. And that's the reason why you will get je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. And then keep in mind this little circumflex thing here. But then for the plural form, we've got a different stem, connaisse, and then the endings will be the same. ONS as usual, EZ and ENT. So you will get the forms nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right? So it's actually a bit difficult probably at the beginning, but once you, you have the idea that actually you've got two different stems for the singular and for the plural, then it's actually quite easy. Uh, regarding the circumflex thing, well, it's up to you if you want to write it or not, but you should put it, of course. Let's see now together the verbs that will 
actually be conjugated like connaître. And they are accroître, croître, paraître, apparaître, disparaître, naître, renaître, reconnaître, comparaître, and few others. So regarding the translation now, accroître, and it's to increase. Croître, grow. Paraître, appear, seem. Apparaître, come into being. Disparaître, disappear. Naître, be born. Renaître, rise, be reborn. Reconnaître, recognize. Comparaître, appear before. Okay, and these verbs will actually be conjugated like connaître. Le futur proche, so basically if you want to translate it directly, it would be the near future. So what is le futur proche exactly? It's the possibility that we have in French and in other languages to construct basically a future with aller, at the present form, followed by the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so like in English you would say, I am going to travel, for instance. In French we would say, je vais voyager. Okay, so remember, first aller, that you conjugate at the present form, and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form. Okay? So first, of course, we did introduce the verb aller and the way to conjugate it, but still I think that it is really important to see how it goes. So we will see one more time the conjugation of aller at the present form. Okay? First person here, je vais. Remember final s not pronounced. Je vais. Okay? Tu vas. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il, elle, va. Nous allons. Final S not pronounced. And then when you get this O-N combination, you get this nasal, on, really in your nose, okay? On. And then let's make this little liaison here to make it sound more beautiful, nous allons, nous allons, okay, same thing here, vous allez, vous allez, all right, remember, classic ending for vous, a Z, okay, but then when you combine these two letters, you get the sound E, okay, allez, and then vous allez, all right, and the last persons, ils, elles, vont, ils vont, Elles vont. Okay, remember, final T not pronounced, so you get this O-N nasal here. On vont. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Je vais. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Vous allez. Ils vont. Elles vont. Okay, so that's the first part that we'll, we will use to construct this uh, future proche, okay? And then the second part will be, well, the verb that you want to express, but at the infinitive form. So I've been writing few examples here. So the first sentence, je vais voyager, voyager means to travel, avec, with, ma famille, my family. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Famille. Okay? So, quite simple way to construct a future form. Tu vas chercher, chercher means to search, une nouvelle maison. Okay? Une nouvelle, nouvelle, it's the feminine form of the adjective nouveau, new. Okay, because maison, house, as you can see here, is feminine. So, une nouvelle maison, a new house. 
Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Ok? And then, il, elle va partir. Partir is to leave. Ok? Pour, pour means for. Pour un an. One year. Un an. Ok? So I will make the, the liaison just to, to make it more more uh, normal after okay but i just want to divide here un an okay so let's read it normally now il va partir pour un an okay so you can hear that now i make this link between the two un an un an so no break between the two un an okay il va partir pour un an elle va partir pour un an okay then for nous nous Allons chanter, chanter means to sing, ok, cette chanson, so remember, cette feminine form of ce, this, ok, chanson, song, and as chanson is feminine, so you should put this, this form here at the feminine, this, ok, nous allons chanter cette chanson, nous allons chanter cette chanson, mm -hmm. And then for vous, vous allez adorer, so adorer to adore, to love a lot, <laughs> ce film, ok? Ce, so you see now this, ok? But then it's the masculine form because film, film here is masculine. Ce film, this movie, ok? Vous allez adorer ce film. Vous allez adorer ce film. And the last one. Ils vont boire, boire is to drink, un café, a coffee. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Ok, so let's repeat everything again. Je vais voyager avec ma famille. Tu vas chercher une nouvelle maison. Il va partir pour un an. Elle va partir pour un an. Nous allons chanter cette chanson. Vous allez adorer ce film. Ils vont boire un café. Elles vont boire un café. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon B. And in this, in, in this lesson, sorry, we'll uh, try to work on the le genre des mots, so the gender of the words because normally that's uh, something a bit difficult uh, for um, students to know or to remember the gender of the words so normally what I tell them is to try to memorize try to remember the gender when they discover or when they see a new word but I know it's not uh, it's not easy okay so in this lesson we'll try to see actually a few endings that give you some useful tips and uh, well, well we'll focus only on the on the feminine feminine words uh, and we'll stop right now <clears throat> sorry so uh, when you see words that are ending with this e o n so you can be almost <laughs> this is quite important never say always uh, when you talk about Fran French language language because you always find some uh, exceptions okay so uh, I won't say always I will say in most of the cases okay when they end with e o n okay um, they in most of the cases they will be feminine okay so for instance here la libération or then la nation Okay. Other ending is T. So when a word is finishing or ending with T, like that, la rapidité, rapidité means uh, speed, and then la santé, health. Okay. In this case, you can be almost sure that these words will be feminine. Okay. When they're ending with ure, ur, okay, la peinture. Paint, la voiture, car, okay, so they are feminine. And then when they're ending with S, like that, E, S, S, E. So for instance, la politesse, 
la vitesse. Vitesse means uh, speed. Okay? So these words are feminine and these endings are classical ending for feminine form. Okay, so let's see them one more time. La libération, la nation, la rapidité, la santé, la peinture, la voiture, la politesse, la vitesse. Okay, so let's see a few more. So, still for the feminine form. So, when you will have a word ending with this E, double T, E, et, et, okay, for instance, la chaussette, la roulette, so they will be feminine, okay, chaussette means sock, and then roulette, well, it's the same, the thing you will find in casinos, and then when they're ending with E, E, like here, Okay, so basically you don't pronounce the, the E, okay, so it will be only the sound E, okay, for instance, la vie, life, okay, la partie, the part, okay, so they will be feminine as well, okay, and then words ending with E, accent aigu, and then E here, okay, remember, this final E is not pronounced, so you will have this E, remember, accent aigu, it's E, sound, okay, la poupée, the doll, l'arrivée, the arrival, okay, la poupée, l'arrivée, so feminine as well. Uh, in that case, remember that normally it should be la arrivée, but as arrivée, as usual, you know, start with the, a vowel, then a is disappearing, and then you just put this apostrophe, okay, and then words ending with ud, like that, u, d, e, Ud, okay, are normally, in most of the cases, feminine. La gratitude, well, if I, my understanding is correct, is exactly the same in English. La gratitude, and then same thing here, latitude, latitude. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. La chaussette, la roulette, la vie, la partie. La poupée, l'arrivée, la gratitude, l'attitude. Okay, I know it's not the key. It's not the magic key that will help you forever and uh, that will uh, give you all the time the, 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 the correct gender of the words, but still you've got some, you've got some tips now, okay? It was leçon B, okay? Remember that I've been doing uh, many lessons, so they can be found there on youtube.com slash imagier okay and then the website is here imagier.net you can find more material there have a nice day bye bye l'article partitif so what's l'article partitif well basically it's when you want to say that you want some sugar for instance so you don't want to specify the quantity Okay, just want to say that you want some, but you don't want to say one, two, three. Okay, then as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so for the masculine form, it will be du. Okay, du. Simple thing, d, u. This is u, this is d. Du. All right. And then for the feminine form, it will be de la. Okay? De la. Alright? Masculine form, du. Feminine form, de la. Alright? Let's see a few examples now. Je bois. Boire, boire is to drink. Okay? So, je bois du café. Alright? So, you can see the difference here. It would be possible to say, je bois un café. Okay? In that case, you would translate it, je bois un café by, I drink one coffee or I drink a coffee. Okay? In that case, when you put this du café, so first you put the masculine form, because café is masculine. Okay? And then you want to say, you don't want to specify the quantity, you want to say, I drink some 
coffee. Okay? Je bois du café. Okay? Uh, the other option as well would be to say je bois le café. So if you want to put this article défini, but then you would have to put more information after le café de ma mère, uh, the coffee of my mother, if you want. Okay? So in that case, in this lesson, we'll only focus on l'article partitif. So it's some. Okay? Je bois du café. All right? Let's see another option. Tu voudrais... So I wanted to introduce this voudrais form. Okay? So it's coming from vouloir. Vouloir is to want. Okay? But then it's not the present form here the classic present form, it's the conditionnel form, okay? So it's the polite form that normally we should use. So I would like to have, you know, you don't say tu veux, you don't say you want because it is, uh, it is too, too, too strong and too direct. So normally we tend to use this conditionnel form. Uh, so tu voudrais, you would like to have, and then salad, okay, and it's feminine, so you should put the feminine form of this partitif, so de la salade, so some salad, okay, tu voudrais de la salade, all right, let's see another example here, nous mangeons, so manger is to eat, okay, and that's the, the form for nous, okay, nous Mangeons du gâteau. Gâteau is cake, okay? And it's masculine, so du gâteau. We eat some cake. Vous voulez, okay, so vouloir again, all right, to want, okay, but here it's the present form, okay? Do you want? Vous voulez du fromage, cheese, du fromage, so some cheese. And it's a question. Vous voulez du fromage? Okay. And the last example here. So I've been putting this il y a. We'll see that a bit later in this unit, but it will come. Il y a means there is. Okay. Il y a, there is. Okay. Il y a de la neige. Neige is snow. Okay. Par terre, on the ground. Par terre. So there is snow. On the ground. Il y a de la neige par terre. Okay, so let's repeat all these sentences. The first one. Je bois du café. Second one. Tu voudrais de la salade. Nous mangeons du gâteau. Vous voulez du fromage? It's a question, so I've been insisting a little bit too much maybe. Let's do it one more time. Vous voulez du fromage? And the last one, il y a de la neige par terre. Pourquoi? Why? Pourquoi? Why? Okay? So, if you ask a question with pourquoi? Why? Normally, the answer that you will have will start with whether parce que, because, okay? Or then, pour, plus, one verb at the infinitive form, so the basic form, okay? So whether parce que, and then you just start a sentence, or then pour plus a verb at the infinitive form, okay? Let's see now some examples. First question, pourquoi es-tu ici? Pourquoi es-tu ici? Okay, ici means here. Et tu, are you? Why are you here? Pourquoi es-tu ici? So the first answer. Parce que, so because, je suis invité, I am invited, par, by Nicolas. Because I am invited by Nicolas. Parce que, je suis invité par Nicolas. Okay, so normally when, when you start with the parce que, so you want to express the reason why, okay? Parce que je suis invité par Nicolas. Alright? And then, 
other option would be pour passer la soirée. So in that case, passer uh, should be translated like, like uh, spend, okay? Pour, to spend, pour passer la soirée, the evening, avec, with, vous, you. Pour passer la soirée avec vous, to spend the evening with you. And in that case, when you will start your answer with pour, okay, so you will express what will you, you, you will do uh, after that, okay, pour passer la soirée avec vous, okay, and in that case, parce que you want to introduce the reason why, okay, so that's the way we will construct answers when you will ask a question with pourquoi, okay. Où est le cube Where is the cube? Où est le cube? Okay, so let's see that together. Uh, so here, first situation. Here, okay. So this is le cube and this is le cylindre. Okay, so just to make it clear because that's the things we'll use uh, to introduce, well, the prepositions. Le cube est sur le cylindre. So you can see it's on, okay, so sur le cylindre, okay, and there is contact here, okay, it's quite important. Second option, same thing, but it's basically under here. Le cube est sous le cylindre, okay, le cube est sous le cylindre. Don't pronounce the final S. And then this OU combination of vowels is pronounced OU. Okay? Sous. Sous. Le cube est sous le cylindre. Alright? Then, here, no contact. And that's really important. Okay? Le cube est au-dessus du cylindre. So let's repeat it. Le cube est au-dessus, final S not pronounced here, au-dessus du cylindre. Okay? Then, same, situa same, same situation, sorry, but then the opposite, so it's here and no contact here, you can see no contact. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre. Okay? Au-dessous, final S not pronounced, du cylindre. Le cube est au-dessous du cylindre. All right? So, here, I've been putting the plural form because we've got two here. Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. So, next to, okay? Les cubes sont à côté du cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay, gauche, left, on the left, of le cylindre. Le cube est à gauche du cylindre. Okay, then the next one. Droite, obviously it's right, on the right. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Le cube est à droite du cylindre. Ok? In front of. Le cube est devant le cylindre. Le cube est devant le cylindre. And now, behind, it's not possible to see it, that's the reason why. Le cube est derrière, so behind, le cylindre. Le cube est derrière le cylindre. So I've been taking away the color just to, to show you that it's inside, okay? So in, le cube est dans, so in, le cylindre. Le cube est dans le cylindre. Cylindre. Les adverbes de lieu. So really useful. And we're starting right now. So the first one that we'll see 
So I've been putting each time the English first and then the French version here. Okay, so here. <laughs> so I was re I won't read the the, the the English one. I will focus on the on the French one if that's okay with you. Ici. Ici. Okay. Then la. So remember you've got this accent but well you don't pronounce it. Okay, so it's la. La. Oops. La ba. La ba. Remember final s not pronounced. La ba. Loin. Loin. So remember when you get this combination o i n it's oin 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 okay? Loin. All right? So let's see them one more time. Ici, là, là-bas, loin. Ok? Devant, final T not pronounced. Devant, devant. Derrière. So if you look carefully, you've got E here and then double R. So it will open the sound of this E and you should pronounce it E. Okay, de, derrière, same thing here, you've got this E accent grave, E, derrière, okay, don't pronounce the final E, derrière, okay, final S not pronounced, dessus, 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 dessous, dessous, final S not pronounced here, Dessous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Devant, derrière, dessus, dessous. Ok. Dedans, final S not pronounced. Dedans, dedans. Dehors. Ok, so remember final S not pronounced and then this H. In French, doesn't exist phonetically, so you don't pronounce it. De or, de or, de or. En haut, en haut. Okay, final T not pronounced, and then this H as previously, you don't pronounce it. So this is O, en O, en O, en O. En bas. Final S not pronounced. En bas. En bas. Ok? Quelque part. Don't pronounce the final T. Quelque part. Quelque part. Autre part. Autre part. Autre part. Ailleurs, look, final S not pronounced, and then you've got this y, y, y sound, ailleurs, okay, so I, sorry, I insist a little bit too much maybe, but still, let's read it normally now, ailleurs, ailleurs, okay, autour, 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 okay, so repeat them one more time, quelque part, Autre part, ailleurs, autour. Comment exprimer, sorry, comment exprimer l'obligation. So, when you must do something, well, there is a verb for that, to express, to express must, and this is falloir. Falloir, ok, falloir. And then you will have two options, the first one will be Il faut, so you get to remember that falloir is what we call verb impersonnel, okay, because there is only one form and it's il, third person of the singular, il faut, okay, so uh, je, tu, nous, vous, etc., they don't exist for falloir, it's only il, okay, il faut, and then the verb coming after will be at the infinitive. 
okay so that's the way to express to must okay and then or to have to if you want il faut okay same form but then you will add after that un nom a noun okay so whether a verb at the infinitive form or then a noun so we'll see a few examples now so the first scénario as we would say in French is falloir plus infinitif okay so here il faut respecter les règles all right il faut respecter so to respect les règles the rules il faut respecter les règles all right and then another option so i've been putting here and here the two parts of the negative form il ne faut pas fumer fumer is to smoke ici here il ne faut pas fumer ici okay so now we'll see the way it works with noun a noun and here for instance il faut so still il faut remember as i said uh, it's only il faut so it's a verb impersonnel okay une carte d'identité il faut une carte d'identité second example here il faut un parapluie umbrella un parapluie car because il pleut it's raining it rains il faut un parapluie car il pleut les adjectifs ordinaux les adjectifs ordinaux so in english it would be first second third fourth etc etc so we'll see how they go in uh, in french and so we'll start with the first okay and as usual in french remember we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form okay so each time we'll have here and here the masculine form and the feminine form here that's the way you can see them written when you get to make them short okay so they can be written like that okay so we'll pronounce them le premier so the first le premier la première le premier la première okay then le deuxième la deuxième so in that case it's only the le and la that will be different because deuxième will be the same if you look at them okay then same thing here le troisième la troisième le troisième la troisième okay le quatrième la quatrième le quatrième la quatrième le cinquième la cinquième le cinquième la cinquième le sixième la sixième le sixième la sixième le septième so remember we don't pronounce this p here le septième la septième okay le huitième remember h doesn't exist huitième huitième la huitième le neuvième neuvième so it's v here remember v vième la neuvième le neuvième la neuvième le dixième so remember if an, even if you've got this z x here you pronounce it z dixième dixième same thing as we had here sixième okay le dixième la dixième le verbe partir partir means to leave 
okay at the present form so we see this verb because uh, this verb is normally quite useful and then uh, it is not regular so it belongs to the third group of verbs so it's always good to see the conjugation together okay so the first form is je pars so final s not pronounced je pars tu pars same form you can see here and here so final s not pronounced tu pars il elle pars final t not pronounced il elle pars okay so you can see that it's par sorry <laughs> par par and then par okay so the same phonetical form for these persons but then obviously and of course for nous it will be different so classic ending o n s you don't pronounce the s you just have this on on sound nasal nous partons nous partons okay then for vous classic ending for vous as well a z but then you pronounce it e vous partez vous partez okay and the last persons il elle part remember classic ending e n t but then you don't pronounce them part part okay so let's repeat them again je pars tu pars il part elle part nous partons vous partez ils partent elle part Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll discover together how to conjugate at the present form le verbe venir. So, venir means to come. Okay, so it's quite useful and especially it does belong to the third group of verbs. So, it's not regular. So, for the present form it's quite useful to spend few minutes just to see the conjugation together okay so we'll we'll start right now first form je viens final s not pronounced je viens remember i e n yen yen je viens okay tu viens final s not pronounced tu viens okay then il elle vient final t not pronounced il elle vient okay so je viens tu viens il elle vient phonetically it's the same form okay but then for nous it will be a bit different o n s remember classic ending for nous at the present form final s not pronounced so you will get the sound venons nous venons nous the nom okay then classic ending for vous a z here and then you pronounce it a vous venez vous venez okay and the last one here so you've got this double n just after the e uh, so it will change a little bit your pronunciation you will have to pronounce this e uh, like a eh, a eh, okay il Vienne. So remember this classic ending e n t for the third person of the plural is here, but phonetically doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Vienne, vienne. Okay. Il vienne, elle vienne. All right. So let's see the form one more time. Je viens. Tu viens. Il vient. Elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So, venir is quite important. Be sure to remember it by heart. Please, 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 s'il vous plaît. Uh, and then, when you're ready, you can go at the following address to find the next lesson. Okay? And then more material here, imagie.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Les pronoms C O D. Okay, so no stress, but still it will be quite important. Okay, les pronoms C O D. So we'll take first 
a sentence. Okay, so it's a question and it's Tu regardes la télévision. Okay, so Tu regardes, regardez, is to watch la télévision. So if we look at this question, okay, and then we want to define all the elements, the first thing that we've got in this sentence is tu, okay, so it's here, and it's sujet, so the subject of the sentence here, okay. Second part that we've got here is regarde, okay, regarde here, and it's the verb, okay, that you've been conjugating, it's uh, s just because it's tu, all right. And the second part, or the, sorry, the, so the third part here, so the la last part, la télévision. So la télévision, that's what we will call complément, okay, because it's a complement, it will complete the sentence here by giving some information. It's objet, it doesn't have anything to do because it's uh, la télévision, okay, so it's not an object like that, but it's what we call grammatical object, okay, and we say that it's direct because you don't have any preposition between the verb and this complément, okay, so no preposition, so it's direct, okay, so why do we say that it's quite important to use les pronoms COD just because when you've got a question, so if someone is asking you to regard la télévision, okay, the first option would be oui, je regarde la télévision. So, of course, it's possible to repeat, I mean, this part, la télévision, okay, but then if we're honest, then in most of the cases, we won't repeat la télévision in that case, we will use what we call pronouns, okay, just to avoid repeating this word, okay? So let's see these pronouns together. So as usual, we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, okay? In that case here, we'll start with the masculin singulier. Masculin singulier will be first le, or then, as usual, if we've got a vowel coming after, the E will disappear, so it will be L apostrophe, okay? Le, or then L, like that, okay? If it's feminine, and at the singular form, so we're talking here about the third person of the singular, it will be LA, or for the same reasons as previously, L apostrophe, if you get a vowel after. Okay? And then for the plural form, so here we're talking about the third person of the plural, then it will be LE. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. So for the masculine singular form, it's LE. For the feminine singular form, it's LA. Okay? And then if they are followed by vowels, then you take a uh, and a uh, away, and then you get this l, okay, and for the plural form here, it's le, all right, so let's see that in action now. So if you get the same question, tu regardes la télévision, all right, so now we've got all the elements, so we know that tu was the subject, Regarde the verb, la télévision, complément d'objet direct, and that's the thing we want to replace. We don't want to repeat la télévision, okay? So first, what do we need to do is first to spot the gender of the word. We know that la télévision is feminine, okay? So we've got all the keys necessary. Oui. Je la regarde. So, as I said a long time ago in the lesson, remember that in French, the pronouns, like this one for instance, are coming before the verb. So that's the reason why you will have this la 
here before the verb. Oui, je la regarde. Okay? Let's take another question. And here you get Tu vas regarder la télévision. So what's the difference between the previous question and this question? Well, this is, and we saw that in a previous lesson, uh, I guess it was on this unit, so you can check it if you're not sure about that. That's what we call the futur proche, so the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. You are going to watch. Okay, so that's the near future. Tu vas regarder la télévision. Okay, and then here, if you look carefully, well, you've got two verbs. And that's the important thing here. So if you will have a structure with two verbs, verbs and then you want to use a pronoun this pronoun will come always before the second verb like here oui je vais la regarder okay so i'm not telling you that it will come between the two verbs because you can have many things between these verbs okay so focus on this idea that it will come before the second verb oui je vais la regarder okay so we'll see that les pronoms complément d'objet direct can replace all the persons so for the first person, it will be me. Second person, it will be te. Third person of the singular, so the one we saw, le for the masculine form, and then la for the feminine form. First person of the plural, nous. So basically, it's quite easy to memorize this one, to remember it. Same thing here. Second person of the plural, vous and then third person of the plural les all right so me te le la nous vous les all right so we'll see now a few examples so the first one il me Regarde. So if you want to say that he is looking at me, il me regarde. Okay. So remember, as I said previously, these pronouns are coming before the verb. Okay. Il me regarde. Present form, only one verb. You just put it before. Il me regarde. Il te regarde. So he's looking at you. Il te regarde. Il le regarde. Il la regarde. He's looking at him, he's looking at her. Il nous regarde. Il vous regarde. Il les regarde. Okay? It's not that difficult when you, when you try to remember, well, first, of course, the, the pronouns, and then this idea that it will come before the verb. Well, honestly, it's not that tricky, okay? Uh, I've been putting the same sentence, but then at this near future form, okay? So just to show you, if you forgot it, that it should come before the second verb, okay? So, il va me regarder so he's going to watch me hein, or to look at me okay il va me regarder il va te regarder il va le regarder il va la regarder il va nous regarder il va vous regarder il va les regarder Les pronoms C-O-I. Okay, les pronoms C-O-I. So, uh, well, let's say that it's the second part of uh, les pronoms C-O-I.
or complément d'objet. Okay. So if you didn't watch the previous lesson, uh, well, maybe it would be it would be better to to do so so that you could understand maybe more clearly the the, the, the whole thing. Okay. But then still, we're starting right now. So les pronoms complément d'objet direct. So we'll start with a une question, a question. Okay. So we'll see. It's a basic question. Okay. You get tu parles à ton frère. Okay, parler is to talk. Tu parles, you talk, to your brother, à ton frère. Okay, so if we have a look at the elements in this sentence, the first part or the first element is tu, okay, and that's the subject of the sentence, tu, all right. Then the second element is parle, okay, and that's the, the verb. So it's ending like that because you've been conjugating this verb according to tu, okay, but it's a verb here, and then we've got this last part here, à ton frère, so that's what we call complément, so it will come to complete the sentence, okay, and it's objet, okay, so be careful, it's really what we call a grammatical object, so it's not an object, because in that case, it's a good example, because it's a person, okay, but then it's a grammatical object, and it's indirect because you've got this preposition a here, okay? So in the previous les uh, lesson, we saw the direct ones, okay? They were without any preposition, okay? But then in this lesson, it's indirect because you've got the preposition a here, okay? And it will change the things. So let's see the question. You can ask the question, so it's the same. Tu parles à ton frère? Okay, and then the answer that you could give, of course, would be Oui, je parle à mon frère. But let's say that in most of the cases in French, we won't repeat this à mon frère part. Okay, we'd rather use pronouns just to avoid repeating this complément d'objet indirect. Okay, so we'll see how they go. As usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form, the feminine form, and the plural form. Okay, and here, just to start, we'll start with masculine singular. Okay, masculine singular form will be lui. Okay, ui, ui, lui. All right. Féminin singulier, so feminine form and the singular form here, it will be lui. <coughs> so it's quite easy to memorize, to remember, okay, because it is the same form for the masculine and the feminine form, okay? And then for the plural form, so third person of the plural, to be more precise, it will be leur, okay? So masculine singular, third person of the Singular, lui, féminin singulier, féminin singular form, third person of the singular, lui, and then the plural form, third person of the plural, leur. Okay, let's see now the same question. Okay, tu parles à ton frère. Okay, and the idea in that case, of course, is to avoid repeating this part here, so complément d'objet indirect, and to replace it with the pronoun, okay? So first we know that it's indirect because we've got the preposition here. We know here that it's masculine because it's brother, okay? And then we've got the information here because it's ton, all right? So we've got all the elements just to reply using the pronoun. Oui. Je, lui, parle. Okay? So the only thing you should really um, think about here is the position. So you should remember, as I said previously, that the pronouns in French will be placed before the verb. So, je, lui, parle. Oui, je lui parle. All right? And then we could have 
Well, basically the same question, but then this question would be like it is here at the near future. So if you didn't see the lesson regarding the, the near future, uh, maybe it would be uh, more useful for you to, to watch it, but still the near future it's a way to construct the future, but at the present tense with the, the verb aller, to go, you are going to speak or talk okay, to your brother. Okay, so you are going to, but then the, the important thing in that thing in that case is that you've got two verbs. Okay, you've got aller here to go, and then you've got parler to speak or to talk. Okay, and when you've got two verbs, then for the pronoun that you would like to use, you will have to put it just before the second verb. Oui, je vais lui. Parler. Okay, so I'm not telling you that uh, it should be between because that's the case here, but then between these two verbs you could put many, many things, okay, like adverbs or other things, okay, so remember that this pronoun lui should be before the second verb, alright, so now we'll see these pronouns, but then for all the persons, Okay, for the first person of the singular, it will be me. Second person of the singular, te. Then third person, like we saw, so masculine and feminine, and I only put one, so lui, because it's the same. First person of the plural, nous. Second person of the plural, vous. Third person of the plural, leur. Okay, me. Te, lui, nous, vous, leur. Alright? So let's see examples now. So he's talking to me. Il me parle. Okay, remember. Me, and then before the verb. Il me parle. He's talking to you. Il te parle. Il lui parle. I don't know why Lui is still white. <laughs> well, maybe it was a mistake for my... Yeah, it is a mistake. It should be It should be arranged, but then still. Il lui parle. Okay. Il nous parle. Il vous parle. Il leur parle. All right. Il me parle. Il te parle. Il lui parle. Il nous parle. Il vous parle, il leur parle. Okay, so these examples are with one verb, okay, and then I've been rewrite, rewriting the same, same um, sentence, but then at the near future, okay, with the two verbs, and then we can see how they go now. Il va me parler, he's going to talk to me. Il va me parler, so remember, you know, me before the second verb. Il va te parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va lui parler, he's going to talk to her, or he's going to talk to him, okay. Il va nous parler, he's going to talk to us. Il va vous parler, he's going to talk to you. Il va leur parler, he's going to talk to them, okay. Il va me parler, il va te parler, il va lui parler, il va nous parler. Il va vous parler, il va leur parler. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 4, leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll see how to conjugate together le verbe vouloir. Vouloir means to want, and uh, it belongs to the third group of verbs in French, so irregular. So that's the reason why I think it's quite good to see the conjugation at the present form together. So, here it goes. Vouloir, first person, je veux, final X not pronounced. Je veux. Tu veux, final X not pronounced, the same form. Il veut, final T not pronounced, elle veut. Okay, so here, so far we've got one phonetical form, it's veut. Then for nous, Classic ending, O-N-S, don't pronounce the S, just pronounce the ON, NOUS, VOULONS, 
nous voulons. Same thing here, classic ending, EZ for vous, but then you pronounce it E. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. Vous voulez. And the last one, here, E, U, E, and then E, N, T, classic ending, but then you don't pronounce it, so you get veulent. Veulent. Ils veulent. Elles veulent. Ils veulent. Elles veulent. Okay, so let's repeat it one more time. Je veux, tu veux, il veut, elle veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, ils veulent, elles veulent. So that's it for this lesson. It was uh, leçon M. Uh, well, you can find more lessons right here. Imagier is the name of the channel on YouTube, and then more material can be found there at imagier.net. Have a great day, au revoir. Le verbe savoir. Savoir means to know, and it's quite useful, and, uh, but then it is uh, irregular, so it belongs to the third group of verbs, so it's quite good to see the, the way to conjugate it together, okay, at the present form, and we'll see it right now okay so let's start now je sais okay final s not pronounced and then you get this a e a okay je sais c'est okay tu sais same form final s not pronounced tu sais il sait final t not pronounced elle sait so one phonetical form so far Nous savons, so classic ending for nous, O-N-S, you don't pronounce the final S, nous savons, nous savons, okay? Then, vous savez, classic ending for vous, E-Z, but then phonetically it's E, vous savez, savez. And then, il, here, classic ending for il and l at the plural form, E N T, you don't pronounce it, so you get the sound sav, v v v v, sav, okay? Il sav, elle sav. So let's see that one more time. Je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait, nous savons, vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Il y a, so we saw it in a previous lesson quite shortly. So, il y a means there is or there are. But then in French, we will have only one form, il y a. Okay? So, let's see, for instance, here a question. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? Okay? Est-ce qu'il y a, so... Is there un magasin, a shop, dans le quartier, in the neighborhood? Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a un magasin dans le quartier? All right. So the answer would be, oui, il est juste ici. Yes, it is right here. Oui, il est juste ici. Okay. So in that case, we've been using this il y a, there is. Okay, just because un magasin, well, it's singular. Okay, so it's basically there is a shop, there is something. Okay, let's see now. Here, same thing. Il y a une piscine, une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville. All right, so you can see that in the first example, I've been using this S que. You remember, we saw that previously, that you can add if you want to ask a question, okay? Or then it's possible here just to keep the same order. There is, il y a, okay? Une piscine, a swimming pool, dans cette ville, in this town, okay? But then, don't forget to raise your voice at the end because it's a question. Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Il y a une piscine dans cette ville? Okay, just a little bit to make it clear that it's a question, okay? So, answer, oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. À côté, remember, it was next or near, 
OK? And then la mairie, city hall. Oui, elle est à côté de la mairie. All right? So, in both cases here, il y a, just because it was masculin singulier, OK? And then here, il y a une piscine, féminin singulier. All right? And we'll see now the other option that we would have to ask correctly the question. So, first, look at it. Il y a, actually, you should change the order and put it like that. And the way you will pronounce it is, y a-t-il, y a-t-il, okay, so that's the correct form to ask a question with il y a, so the formal form, if you want. And then, des toilettes, here it's the plural form, okay, toilets, okay. So, it doesn't really change because it will stay il y a, Okay, but then here, of course, the order is changing, so that's the reason why it can be a bit tricky to, to notify the, the, the fact that basically it doesn't change even if it's plural here. Okay? Dans ce restaurant, in this restaurant, y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Y a-t-il des toilettes dans ce restaurant? Okay, and then the answer, oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay, droite. Remember, it was on the right. À droite, on the right. Just on the right. Oui, elles sont juste à droite. Okay? So, to re resume the whole thing, remember this il y a will be used so for there is. So, like here, un magasin, a shop. So, it's the singular form. Okay? Or then here as well. Il y a, there is, une piscine, a swimming pool. But still, it will be also used as like that, il y a, okay, or then in the other order here, for the plural form, okay, it doesn't change. So that's one interesting thing in French. For once, it's easy, it doesn't change, il y a plus singulier, or then il y a plus pluriel, okay. And in this unit, we'll discover together le Passé composé. So le passé composé is a past tense and it's uh, probably the one that you will use in most of the cases because that's the past tense that we tend to use to express what we've been doing uh, for the weekend or uh, well, the, well normally the, the, the past that is not that far. If you're talking about your childhood or something really far, we will normally use uh, another tense that's called uh, l'imparfait. That we'll see a bit later. So now, in this uh, lesson, we'll focus on le passé composé. So, we'll have now few examples here, just to show you first how it goes, okay? So, in this first sentence, so I took this manger to eat verb, okay? Je mange au restaurant. And so, if you look carefully, you can see that this sentence is at the present tense, okay? Je mange au au restaurant. So, I eat at the restaurant. Okay? And then, here, I wanted to show you what this passé composé form looks like. Okay? So, you can see that you've got first here the verb avoir at the present form. Okay? So, it goes like j'ai. And then, the second part, so, because that's the main concept of this Passé, composé, composé means, means composed, so you, you will have two parts, okay? And this is the second part here, and that's what we call participe passé, so uh, past participle, and it goes like manger with an accent here at the end, okay? So we'll see why in a few minutes, okay? So the rest doesn't change, okay? And then you've got this j'ai mangé au restaurant, well, it's the sentence, same sentence, but it's at the past tense, so it could be like yesterday, maybe last weekend, okay? Another example here, tu regardes la télévision, okay? Remember, regarder is to watch, okay? So you are watching the television. Tu regardes la télévision, so that's here the present tense, okay? And so if we want to put the same verb at the past tense. Well, basically, we've got to respect the same rule that we had previously. Here, you see, we had avoir, so at the first person for je, and then here, we've got avoir at the second person for tu, you, okay? And it's at the present form here, tu, a, and then same thing here, you will have to put this 
participe passé forme, OK, past participle, with an accent here, because it belongs to the first group, tu as regardé la télévision. OK? So, of course, I know that many... Many of you will say, mm -hmm, it looks so simple, it's not possible to be so simple in French. And that's, that's, that's true. We will have exceptions. And here, we've got a good example. So, il va au travail. Okay, remember, va, it's the form at the present tense uh, for the verb aller. Aller is to go. Okay, and so we will see that few verbs we will have to change a little bit the, 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 the way to construct the passé composé because here you can see that in the past tense sentence here we don't use avoir as we did previously like with manger, j'ai, tu as, with regarder, okay? But we will use être, okay? Il, est, and then you can see here aller, so participe passé, au, travail at work. Il est allé au travail. Okay? And this will be, well, the first difficulty of uh, the passé composé form. So you should really uh, think about the fact that, well, most of the verbs will be constructed with avoir, okay? And the, the one that you will construct with the être will be the exceptions. So you will have to remember them by heart, of course, okay, so we'll, we'll make a list after. But then, so if we want to make it simple, so just to resume the whole thing first, okay, so normally if you want to construct this passé composé form, then the first part that you will have to put is avoir at the present tense, and then the second part will be this participe passé form, okay, that we will see, and then you will get this passé composé, okay. For the exceptions, as I said, we will have to use être at the present form, then the participe passé form, so you will get this passé composé. Okay? Now, let's see the verbs that will require être at the passé composé. The first one that we saw in the, the, the example that I gave you previously was aller. Aller is to go. Okay? Second one, arriver. Arriver means to arrive. Third one, descendre. Descendre means to go down. Then, devenir. Devenir means to become. Then, entrer. Entrer, to enter. Monter. Monter, to go up. Mourir. Mourir, to die. Naître, naître, to born. Parti, par, sorry, sorry, partir, partir, to leave. Rester, rester, to stay. Retourner, retourner, to return. Sortir, sortir, to go out. Tomber, tomber, to fall. Venir, venir, to come. Okay, so remember that all these verbs here that we saw will require the verb être at the passé composé form. Okay, so the others will require avoir. Okay, so you can see now that, I mean, most of the verbs will require avoir. Okay, and then these verbs will require être. Okay, so let's repeat them one more time. Aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître. Partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Okay? So, let's see the other group of verbs that will all the time require être. 
And these verbs are, well, what we call this réfléchi, sorry, verbe réfléchi, so thinking about the reflexive in English, okay? So, uh, se regarder, for instance, okay? So remember that we've got these verbs, like, so regarder is to watch or to look, and then when you put this se regarder, well, basically you will have the meaning like to look or to watch at oneself, okay? And all these verbs will require être, okay? S'appeler as well, to call oneself. Se présenter, to present oneself. So all these verbs, but then more generally, all the verbs constructed with this se form, okay? So to have this reflexive form, will require être. Okay? So now, let's see again, one more time, if that's okay with you, the conjugation at the present form of avoir and être, because that's the verbs you will have to use, okay? So avoir, remember, it goes like j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, so remember, masculine, feminine, nous avons, so you can put this little, Liaison, link between the two. Nous avons. Vous avez. Same thing here. Little link between the two. And then, ils ont. So the link as well, the liaison. Elles ont. All right, so, j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so it's avoir at the present form. So the form you will have to use for the first part of the passé composé, and then être, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, okay, little liaison here, little link, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont, okay, so one more time, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. All right? And so, for the second part, so what we call this participe passé, so the past participle, you get to remember that the first group of verbs, so if you remember, they end with this er, okay, so we had parler, regarder, etc. So, the infinitive form like a er will give you a accent aigu at the participe passé. So for example, for example here we've got parler, parler is to talk or to speak. So it ends like here with a er, you can see that. First group of verbs, so it will go like parler, like that. The funny thing is that phonetically they are the same. So infinitive parler, so if you remember, we saw that previously, so, I mean, this combination of two letters at the end of the words normally gives the sound E, okay? Parler, and then past participle, participe passé, parler. Same thing here, regarder, regarder, okay? And then even the, the high irregular verb aller, because aller doesn't belong to the first group, uh, even if it ends with uh, air, we saw that previously, but then even this verb will give, uh, well, <laughs> normal or easy uh, participe passé, okay? It goes like aller, like that, okay? So, parler, regarder, regarder is to watch, and then aller, aller is to go, okay? The verbs from the second group, so second group, not all the e air verbs, unfortunately, <laughs> but most of them, well, it would be quite simple because this er will become e, all right? So you will have verbs like choisir, choisir is to choose, will become choisi for the participe passé form, okay? Finir, to finish, to end, fini, like that. Unir, to unite, uni. All right? So it's not that difficult, okay? So choisi, fini, uni. After that, the difficulties 
uh, are for the third group of verbs, so the irregular ones. So it's usually it's quite difficult to make some groups and subgroups, but then we can we can we can have few examples here like connaître. Connaître is to know, okay, and it will give you connu, okay. Voir, like o e r, will become vu. All right. Then verbs like partir, okay, even if it doesn't belong to the second group, it will give you parti, okay, rire, I-R-E, it will give you ri, okay, partir to leave and then rire to laugh, okay, écrire, to write, so I-R-E, will give it, écrit, okay, remember that even if you've got this final T, you don't pronounce it, so it goes like écrit. Okay, dire, i, r, e as well, will give you di, same thing here, i, t, but then you pronounce it i, okay, écrire, to write, dire, to say, and then mettre, to put, so e, t, t, r, e, will give you this i, s, mi, same thing here, final s is not pronounced, mi, okay, and then prendre, so e, n, d, r, e, will give es pri okay same thing here we don't pronounce the final s okay so let's see that again so when you get this être it will go like like u connaître connu then when you will have this o i r it will give you u voir vu okay i r i partir parti i r e will give you i rire ri okay I R E here I T, but then phonetically it's E as well because you don't pronounce the final T. Okay, écrire, écrit. I R E I T, same group. Dire, di. Okay, then E T T R E will give you this E S, but then you don't pronounce the S, so you get I. Mettre, mi, and then E N D R E I S, but then same thing here, the sound I. Prendre pri okay so this is normally the difficulty of the passé composé to remember uh, the, the participe passé form okay in most of the cases I, I tend to to tell my student that well they should learn them by heart especially the irregular ones because after that I mean the regular ones are quite easy to to handle but anyway it's your shot <laughs> so let's see a few examples now so if we take the verb uh, parler so parler to speak or to talk so it goes like j'ai parlé okay tu as parlé il a parlé elle a parlé nous avons parlé, vous avez parlé, ils ont parlé, elles ont parlé. So if you look at it, it's not that difficult, you know. As I said, the only thing first that you should really remember, it's the verb avoir, but then I assume that at this uh, level now it should be okay for you. And then you get to, after that, construct it and put this participe passive form and for the regular verbs like parler, it's quite easy, and phonetically, it's the same. So, j'ai parlé. Okay? Let's see now a few things that you get to remember. So, if you construct the passé composé form with the verb être. Okay? So, we saw the exceptions. I mean, the verbs that are constructed with être. Okay? You will have to remember one important thing. If you've got here... The example of il est allé. Okay, so you can see that aller goes like that without anything after. But if you look at the feminine form, elle est allée, so you can see that the difference between the two is that I've been adding this little e at the end. So this is the thing that you will have to remember if you construct this passé composé form with être you will have to put at the end of this participe passé form something according to the gender. So in that case, it's the feminine form. You will have to put a at the end, okay? Or, let's continue, 
If you've got the plural form like here, il, okay, masculine plural, and that's important, you will have to add this s at the end. And logically, for once in French, if you've got the feminine plural form, so elle here, elles sont allées, you will have to add first this e, so for the feminine, and then s for the plural. Okay, so that's the one, I mean, important thing that you will have to remember if you want to construct this passé composé form, okay, keep in mind one thing. If you want to use French orally, so if you want only to talk, the good thing here, listen to me, il est allé, elle est allée, ils sont allés, elles sont allées. So the good news for you is that even if you write them differently, you will pronounce it the same way. So phonetically, it doesn't change at all. Okay, here you've got aller, aller, even if you've got the final E, you don't pronounce it, aller, even if you've got the S, aller, even if you've got this E, S. Okay, so doesn't change. But if you want to write correctly, you will have to remember that you put this final E uh, when you've got a feminine form, so feminine singular form, you will have to put, to put this S if you get the plural form, so masculine plural, and you will have to add this uh, S if you've got the feminine plural form. Okay? Continuons. So, if we have the, the full thing for aller, it goes like Je suis allé, tu es allé, il est allé, elle est allée, nous sommes allés, vous êtes allés, ils sont allés, elles sont allés. Okay? Let's see as well an example for all these reflexive verbs. Je me suis présenté. Tu t'es présenté. Il s'est présenté. Elle s'est présentée. Nous nous sommes présentés. Vous vous êtes présentés. Ils se sont présentés. Elles se sont présentées. Ok? So, the thing that we've got to keep in mind is in most of the cases you will have to use this avoir at the present form, then this participe passé form, and you will get this passé composé. Ok? In some cases, for the verbs, so the list of verbs we saw, and it's not a long list, so try to remember it, and all the reflexive verbs, you will have to use this être at the present form, then the participe passé. Then you will get this passé composé form. This lesson will work on le participe passé. So in the previous lesson, we, uh, well, I introduced the passé composé form, okay? And if you remember, it was quite important to know how to construct this participe passé. So participe passé is a past participle in English. Um, just because, well, in most of the cases, it is easy for the regular group, so the two first group of verbs that we have in the French language, but uh, for the rest of the verbs, it's a bit tricky to be, uh, to be honest, okay? So we'll see that together. But then, so as I said, for the first group, so the, ver the group of verbs ending with e, er, like that, it is quite easy because you only need to take this e r away and replace it with e accent aigu, okay? So parler, to talk, to speak, will give you parler, okay? The good thing for the phonetical part is that it is the same. Parler, parler, you pronounce it the same, okay? Regarder, so to watch, will give you regarder, okay? And then even this aller verb, so irregular verb, but then it will behave that, like the, the regular verbs. Uh, so, aller will give you aller, uh, accent aigu like that, okay? Second group of verbs, not all the ER verbs, we'll see that a bit later, but most of them. And it's quite easy as well because you will have to take this ER away and just replace it with I, okay? So, choisir, to choose, 
will give you choisi. Finir will become fini. Unir, uni. Ok, choisir to choose, finir to finish or to end, unir to unite. Ok, so the two first group of verbs are quite easy to modify just to make this participe passé form. Ok, but then the third group is a bit more tricky, so we saw a few examples, so like this one, A, I, T, R, E will become U, connaître, to know, connu. O, I, R, voir, to see, will become U, vu. Okay? I, R, so even if partir doesn't belong to the second group, then it will behave the same way, will become I, partir, to leave, parti. Rire, I, R, E, same thing here, will become I. Rire, ri. Okay? I, R, E, will become I, T. Okay? Uh, écrire, to write, will become écrit. Okay? Remember that phonetically this final T doesn't exist. Okay? So the sound will be only this I. Écrit. All right? Dire, I, R, E, will become I, T, D. Okay, phonetically, same thing here. You don't pronounce the final T. Mettre, E, T, T, R, E, will become I, S. Final S, not pronounced, so mettre, to put, mi. Prendre, so E, N, D, R, E, will become I, S. Same thing here, final S, not pronounced, so prendre, pris. Okay, so we will work now on the two main verbs of the French language, so avoir, to have, and obviously it will be a bit strange. <laughs> it will become a uh, u, so you will have to write this participe passé form like that, okay? But you will have to pronounce it u. So remember, main difference or big difference between what you write and what you pronounce, so you write it like that, a uh, u, but then you pronounce it u. Okay, and then être is, well, it's a bit more simple in a way. So it's été, okay, e accent aigu, t, e accent aigu, été, all right, so u and then été. All right, so let's see, or let's discover a few groups of verbs. So verbs ending with r, i, r, okay, will become r, U for the participe passé form, so we'll see a few verbs. Courir, couru. Accourir, accouru. Concourir, concouru. Parcourir, parcouru. Now a new group, so N, I, R, so verbs ending with N, I, R, and it will become N, U, okay? Tenir, tenu. Appartenir à, appartenu à. Contenir, contenu. Entretenir, entretenu. And then it continues. Maintenir, maintenu. Obtenir, obtenu. Retenir, retenu. Okay? So now, another group, so verbs ending with U, I, R, E, and they, they will become U, I, T. Okay, for the participe passé. Let's see. Conduire, conduit. Construire, construit. Cuire, cuit. Détruire, détruit. Instruire, instruit. Okay, so you can notice that even if I put this final T, so as usual, I don't pronounce it. Okay, conduit, construit, cuit, détruit, instruit. Okay, so a few more verbs. Introduire, introduit, produire, produit. Réduire, réduit, séduire, séduit, traduire, 
traduit. Okay, so the same rule because, well, basically it's the same group and then same rule, final T not pronounced, so introduit, produit, réduit, séduit, traduit. Okay? Another group of verbs, so verbs ending with A, I, accent circonflexe, T, R, E, and it will become U. So let's see a few examples. Connaître, connu. Reconnaître, reconnu. Apparaître, apparu. Disparaître, disparu. Paraître, paru. And now let's discover the oudre verbs like coudre, cousu, moudre, moulu, résoudre, résolu. So it's just to show you that, you know, some verbs can be really, really irregular and it's quite easy in some cases to make some groups and subgroups. So you should learn these verbs and the others, I mean the, the irregular ones, by heart if you really want to master this uh, participe passé form and all the composed tenses that will use the, will, will use the participe passé. Okay, so, but then let's continue. The groups, so group of verbs ending with A, I, N, D, R, E, and they will become A, I, N, T. Okay, so a few examples. Craindre, Craint, contraindre, contraint, plaindre, plein. Okay, and as usual, final T here is not pronounced, so you get craint, contraint, plein. Okay, another group, so E, I, N, D, R, E, and it will become E, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Atteindre, Atteint, éteindre, éteint, feindre, fin, peindre, peint, teindre, teint. Ok, as usual, final T, not pronounced. Atteint, éteint, fin, peint, teint. Ok. Now the verbs ending with O, I, N, D, R, E, and they will become O, I, N, T. Okay, so let's see. Joindre, joint, rejoindre, rejoint. Okay, same thing, final T, not pronounced. Joint, so when you get this O, I, N combination of letters, you get the sound OIN. Okay, joint, and then rejoint. Another group, so verbs ending with O, I, R, so it will become U, or then U, accent circonflexe. So even if you put this accent circonflexe, you don't pronounce it, okay, it doesn't change the sound of the letter U, so it's the same phonetically, it's U, and then U, okay? A few examples, décevoir, déçu, apercevoir, aperçu, concevoir, Conçu, recevoir, reçu, devoir, dû, mouvoir, mu. Alright. And now another group, so I, R, E, and they will become I for the participe passé form. Okay? Rire, ri, sourire, Souris, suffire, suffit. How we can say uh, what time it is in French? So, l'heure. Are you ready? Let's start now. So, let's take this simple and interesting example. So, you get this one. So, you will have the chance or the possibility to use two options or two forms. The first one, il est. Okay, so we will use this verb être to introduce the time and we will use this il form. Uh, so don't think of it like he, okay? Uh, but then that's the that's the form that we'll we'll use, okay? Il est six heures. 
all right so er you write it like that remember h is not pronounced okay so it goes like er il est 6 heures if you want to be more precise you can use this morning word okay so it would be like in the morning but then morning okay il est 6 heures du matin okay so in that case you just want to insist on the fact that it's not in the afternoon okay but it's in the morning il est 6 heures du matin okay so now another example quite important because normally French people tend to start to eat at that time so first option would be il est 12 okay because that's the number 12 heures okay and then the other option il est midi okay so midi will be the the, the expression we will use instead of this 12 heures okay midi uh, quite easy to to pronounce il est midi okay same thing here we've got two options the first one would be il est 15 heures okay because that's the number 15 15 il est 15 heures all right and then the other option we will have is to use 3 instead of 15 okay and then we can put après midi afternoon okay il est 3 heures de l'après midi il est 3 heures de l'après midi Okay, so first option, like the official one, il est 15 heures. Okay, and the less formal one, the one that maybe you will use if you're discussing with friends or colleagues, il est 3 heures de l'après-midi. Il est 18 heures. Okay, il est 18 heures. All right, so that's the number, 18, okay? Or then, you can use this 6, okay? And in that case, when we use this 6 heures, we tend to think that, well, that's the limit. It's not really the afternoon, it's the beginning of the evening, so we use soir, d'accord? Il est 6 heures du soir. First option, il est 18 heures. Second possibility, il est 6 heures du soir. Okay, and now, il est 21 heures. So you don't say un, you say une, so 21, just because heure is feminine, so that's the reason why you get to put this feminine form here. Il est 21 heures. All right, or then the other option, il est 9 heures du soir. Il est 9 heures du soir. Okay, here. Il est 24 heures, okay, 24, 24, 24 heures, or then, il est minuit. Il est minuit. So, minuit would be like midnight, okay, il est minuit. So, now, if we want to introduce the Minutes, les minutes. First option would be il est 17 heures 10. Okay, keep in mind that in French we don't write minutes here. Okay, just write 10. 17 heures 10. Okay, or then il est 5 heures 10. Il est 19 heures 15. Okay, 15. 15, 15, or then we've got the other option, it's to use this écart, écart, il est 7 heures écart, first one, il est 19h15, or then, il est 7 heures écart, il est 15h30, 30, 30, or then, Il est trois heures et demie. Il est trois heures et demie. And now, if we're going after 30, 
So, for example, here we've got il est sept heures trente-cinq. So that's the first possibility, trente-cinq thirty-five. Okay, but then as in many languages it's possible to say minus something. Okay, in that case it would be twenty-five. So you can say il est huit heures moins moins means minus vingt-cinq twenty-five. Il est huit heures moins vingt-cinq. Okay, and you can see that here as well we don't use the minute word after. Just put the numbers. Okay, il est huit heures moins vingt-cinq. Il est neuf heures quarante-cinq. Il est neuf heures quarante-cinq. Quarante-cinq forty-five. Or other option, il est dix heures moins le quart. Moins le quart. Il est dix heures moins le quart. Il est onze heures cinquante-cinq. Cinquante-cinq fifty-five. Or then, il est midi. Remember noon. Il est midi moins cinq. Il est midi moins cinq. In this lesson, we'll see vocabulary and then vocabulary connected to la maison, the house. So let's start now. La maison. L'appartement. L'appartement. L'étage. L'étage. L'escalier. L'escalier. La porte d'entrée. La porte d'entrée. Le garage. Le garage. OK, so one more time. L'appartement. So it's the masculine form, by the way. L'étage. Same thing here. Masculine word. L'escalier. Same thing here. Masculine. La porte d'entrée. Le garage. OK, so let's continue now. La cave. Les poubelles. La cheminée. L'ascenseur. Le portail. OK, so la cave. Les poubelles. So here you've got the plural form, but then if you want to put the singular form, it would be la poubelle. Okay, so you know that, you know now, sorry, that it's a feminine word. La cheminée. L'ascenseur. Okay, and it's masculine. Le portail. Let's continue. La sonnette. Le balcon, le toit, la fenêtre, le grenier. OK? So, la sonnette, le balcon, le toit, remember, final T not pronounced, la fenêtre, le grenier. Remember this uh, air here at the end will give you the sound et, nier, grenier. Today we'll work on les adjectifs qualificatifs. So adjectives that are really, really useful and we'll see that in most of the cases, well, we will put this adjective after the name. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, travailleur. Travailleuse. So when it comes to adjective, you've got to keep in mind that, of course, as usual in French, we will have the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. And after this page, we'll see the same page, but then for the plural version, because, of course, we will have the difference between the singular and 
the plural form. Okay? So, travailleur, masculine. So, I will put always the first form here at the masculine form and then the feminine form here. Travailleuse. Okay? So, let's see another example. Heureux, heureuse. Aventureux, aventureuse. Merveilleux, merveilleuse. Sérieux, sérieuse. Joyeux, joyeuse. Paresseux, paresseuse. Naturel, naturel. So here you can see that we write them differently, but then phonetically they are the same. Listen, naturel, naturel. Okay, same way of saying them. Léger, légère. Régulier, régulière. Blanc, blanche. And so for these adjectives and others as well, you should put them after the name, après le nom. Okay? So let's see now the same, exact same adjective, but then at the plural form. Okay? So you can see that travailleur, you will only need to add this final S here. So phonetically it's the same, travailleur, singular form, without the S, and then travailleur, plural form, with the S, it's the same. Feminine form, travailleuse, same rule, and same phonetical thing, you don't pronounce the final S, so you get travailleuse, okay? Travailleur, travailleuse. Then, heureux, doesn't change, heureuse. Final S, not pronounced. Aventureux, doesn't change. Aventureuse, final S, not pronounced. Merveilleux, doesn't change. Merveilleuse, so final S, and then, <laughs> what a surprise, you don't pronounce it. Sérieux, sérieuse. Joyeux, joyeuse. Paresseux, paresseuse. Naturel, naturel. Léger, légère. Régulier, régulière. Blanc, blanche. Ok, so remember, they will come after the name, après le nom, ok? But then, so, oh, sorry, we've got some examples now. C'est un homme travailleur. J'aime la viande froide. Voici une femme heureuse. Nous prenons un repas léger. All right. So if we take one minute to look at it, you've got here travailleur, froide, heureuse, léger. So they are adjectives, okay? And then you've got to keep in mind that you will have to put whether the masculine or the feminine, singular or plural form, according to the word it is connected to. In that case here, you've got un homme, it's a man, okay, so masculine, you can see here that it's the singular form, it's a, un, so you've got to put this adjective at the masculine singular form, travailleur, like that, okay. In that case here, you've got la viande, the meat, meat, sorry, so you can see here that it's singular and it's feminine because it's la, the article la, okay? So you will put froid, so it's cold, okay? You will put it at the feminine form with the final e, okay? But not the plural because it's only the here, 
the singular form. And then here we we'll get une femme, a woman, okay, so feminine article, une, okay, and it's the singular form, so heureuse, here, feminine form, singular form. And then the last one, repas, it's a meal, okay, and here you can see that you get the article, so it's the singular and it's the masculine, so léger, light, should be at the masculine singular form. All right? So let's see now adjectives that uh, will come before the word, the name or the, the word, if you want. Okay, so let's see them. And we've got beau, belle, bon, bonne, grand, grande, gros, grosse, jeune. So it's in interesting here because you get only one form for the masculine and the feminine. It doesn't change. Joli, joli. Mauvais, mauvaise. Nouveau, nouvelle. Petit, petite. Vieux, vieille. Autre, same thing here as for jeune, only one form. Okay, so these adjectives will come before the word or before the name. Okay, so we'll see now the plural version and it's beau. Okay, so you put this X at the end but then you don't pronounce it, so it's beau. All right, belle. Bon, bonne, final S not pronounced. Grand, grande. Gros, grosse. Jeune. Joli, joli. Mauvais, mauvaise. Nouveau, nouvelle. Petit, petite. Vieux, vieille. Autre. All right. So let's see now. Important thing. So we've got some adjectives like beau. So the one we just saw previously. So beau. And then we will have this belle form as well for the masculine form. So let's see here the reason why. So in the first sentence, merci pour ce beau cadeau. So thank you for this beautiful gift. Okay, merci pour ce beau cadeau. So in this, in this sentence, so as we saw previously, we get to put it beau, so the adjective before the word, so cadeau here, gift. And then cadeau is masculine, so we should put the beau form that we saw previously. In the second example here, voici un bel homme. So you could ask me the question, why do you put this bel form instead of beau? Because homme, well it's masculine, yes. The reason is that it starts with the sound O, because if you remember carefully, H is not pronounced, so H doesn't exist phonetically. And then, for aesthetical reasons, of course, uh, we tend to think that if we would have this bo here and then om, we would get this sentence, voici un beau homme. Doesn't sound, doesn't sound nice, so we've got to put this bel form here instead of bo. Okay, so it does mean that for all the situation when you will have a word starting whether with a vowel or H and the vowel, so the H is not pronounced, you will have to put this bel form instead of beau.
Okay, remember you pronounce it bel, so like the feminine version, but then you write it b e l. Okay, voici un bel homme. Here is a beautiful man. Voici un bel homme. Okay, so now you can see the feminine form. In that case, it's quite simple because it doesn't change at all. C'est une belle table. It's a beautiful table. C'est une belle table. Okay, and then, quelle belle femme. Quelle belle femme. What a beautiful lady. Plural form. Okay. In that case, you get to remember that you will have to put this de preposition here before. Okay. Ils ont de beaux enfants. Okay, and if you want to be purist, then you should put the little liaison here, the little link between the two. Ils ont de beaux enfants. Ils ont, here, you get this link as well. Ils ont de beaux enfants. Okay, so, voici de belles promesses. Voici de belles promesses. Same thing if you want to use nouveau. Okay, you will have two versions for the masculine form. So you will have nouveau and then nouvelle. So remember, if you have words, like in that case, ordinateur, masculine words, starting with a vowel or the sound of a vowel. Okay, example here, voici le nouveau chef. Okay, in that case, chef masculine doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so you just put the normal nouveau adjective. Voici le nouveau chef. In the second sentence here, you've got ordinateur. Okay, remember, it starts with O, so the sound of a vowel. J'aime mon nouvel ordinateur. Nouvel, phonetically, you pronounce it like the feminine version, but then you write it N O U V E. L. Okay, we'll see. This is the feminine version, so it goes like double L E. Okay, phonetically it is the same, but you write it differently. For the feminine version, it's quite easy because it doesn't change. Elle a acheté une nouvelle voiture. Elle a acheté une nouvelle voiture. C'est la nouvelle copine de mon frère. C'est la nouvelle copine de mon frère. And then for the plural form. Encore de nouveaux problèmes. Encore de nouveaux problèmes. Ils veulent de nouvelles explications. Same thing here if you want to make the little liaison. Ils veulent de nouvelles explications. All right, remember it was exactly the same thing. You've got to put this de and you don't put de, okay? But you put de in both of the cases if, the, uh, if it's for the, the plural form, whether masculine or feminine. You don't put de, but you put de, okay? So let's see now vieux. So vieux behaves like uh, the two previous adjectives we saw. So you will have one version for the masculine form or two versions sorry for the masculine form so this one the, the the official way and then the second one for the verbs or for the words who are starting with a sound of a vowel like here arbre okay so for normal <laughs> normal word so like chien here dog so you don't have the sound of a vowel at the beginning so il a un vieux chien okay and here c'est un vieil arbre. C'est un vieil arbre. Feminine form, vieille. Okay. J'ai une très vieille voiture. J'ai une très vieille voiture. C'est une vieille table. C'est une vieille table. And then for the plural form. Voici... De vieux journaux. So, same rule, remember, if you want to put this 
uh, de, you shouldn't put de, but de instead. Okay, voici de vieux journaux. Okay, when you put the article uh, les, it doesn't change and it's not a problem. J'aime les vieilles maisons. J'aime les vieilles maisons. All right. In this lesson, we'll try to see together, well, les questions, the questions, the way to ask uh, things. And especially, I would like to see uh, or to show you the difference between, well, what we could call conversation courante, so the two options, and then the last one, it would be the langue officielle or the written uh, way you could, um, well, produce these questions. So, as in many languages, we've got a um, well, difference between what you can produce orally and what you will have to write, okay? So, if we tend to think that the last option uh, would be the formal or the official way uh, to ask a question and then the two first options uh, would be less formal so the the, the way you could uh, ask questions if you're talking to friends colleagues or persons uh, you are connected to okay so let's start with the first example so the first one, if you want to know, uh, well, the, the, the name of the, who is the, the teacher of uh, someone, okay? So the first option would be, ton prof c'est qui? Second option, so you can say that it's a bit longer, so we tend to use this, qui est qui? Qui est qui? You know, this est que, est qui, that we tend to, Add, uh, especially at the oral form, okay? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? All right. So the important thing here for the, the, the oral and the less formal uh, questions is that you, you will have to raise your voice at the end. So clearly it should go like do, 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 do. And then at the end, hop, you raise a little bit your voice, okay? Ton prof, c'est qui? All right. You can hear ton prof, c'est qui? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? And the official or the formal way, and it's, well, basically, it's not that uh, difficult or uh, that long, okay? But then, normally, if you want to ask a question correctly, the, 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 the official way, it should go like you start with the question, so, qui, okay, who, and then, verb, est, ton, Prof. Qui est ton prof? Qui est ton prof? Okay, first one. Ton prof, c'est qui? Qui est-ce qui est ton prof? Qui est ton prof? All right. Let's see another one. So if you want to ask uh, where someone is living, il habite où? So technically, you just put the, the, the words in <laughs> the normal order. So il, he, Habit, lives, où, where. So in that case, you will have to raise your voice as well. Il habite où? Il habite où? Second option, you will have to add, as we had previously, this esque, esque, okay? Où est-ce qu'il habite? Où est-ce qu'il habite? Okay, first one. Il habite où? Où est-ce qu'il habite? And the last one, the official one, so... We start with où, where, then we put the verb, okay, here, habiter, to live, and then after that, we put the subject, il, okay, and as we've got here a vowel and here a vowel, we will have to add this t letter, and then trait d'union, or tiret, here, okay, so you've got this, où habite-t-il, où habite-t-il, Okay, this is the more formal one. First one, il habite où? Second one, où est-ce qu'il habite? Last one, où habite-t-il? All right, so let's see another one. So if you want to know what someone is doing uh, in the evening, tu fais quoi? So you do, and then quoi? What? Ce soir, this evening. Tu fais quoi? Ce soir. Okay, remember, you've got to raise your voice. Tu fais quoi ce soir? Again, tu fais quoi ce soir? Second option, we will have to add this esque, 
as we did previously. Okay. Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? All right. And the last one. As usual, you know, we start with the que, what. Then we've got the verb, fait, so to do. Huh? Then you've got the subject, tu, ce soir, this evening. Que fais-tu ce soir? Que fais-tu ce soir? Okay, so let's see them one more time. The two less formal. Tu fais quoi ce soir? Qu'est-ce que tu fais ce soir? Que fais-tu ce soir? And now if you want well, to know the profession of two persons, in that case they are ladies or girls, okay? Elles font quoi comme métier? So métier is profession, as a profession. Elles font quoi? Remember, faire is to do, okay? Elles font quoi comme métier? Second options. Option, sorry. Qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? So we add this esque. One more time here for the second informal way of asking a question. Qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? And then the more formal one, we start with the question. So quel? In that case, we put the masculine form because métier, profession, is a masculine word. Okay, so quel est, what is, leur, their, métier, profession. Quel est leur métier? What is their profession? Quel est leur métier? Okay, so the less formal, elles font quoi comme métier? Second one, qu'est-ce qu'elles font comme métier? And the last one, quel est leur métier? So if you want the name of someone, remember that we use this s'appeler verb. Okay, so it's a reflexive verb. So it's, that's the reason why you've got this vous, vous. Okay, so the first way of asking the, the, the name of a, a person, uh, well, you use this vous, okay, because it's the, the polite form anyway, because you don't know the person, so definitely you should use this vous, but then, of course, you can use this informal way of asking the name of a person. In that case, you just keep the normal order of the vous, vous appelez, so you call yourself, and then comment, how, all right? Vous vous appelez comment? Remember, as usual, raise a little bit your voice at the end, okay? Vous vous appelez comment? Vous vous appelez comment? All right. Second option, and while well, you can see now, because we've been seeing a few examples before, you can see that the second option with this est que, okay? Well, it's, it's informal in a way, but in it's, it can be quite heavy for uh, beginners to, to, to produce because you've got to use this esque form. So normally it's quite important to uh, recognize it and then uh, know that it's possible. If you want to use it, well, it's an option. If you don't want to use it and then you want to use a less formal way of asking a question, I would advise you to use the first one, okay? But then it's possible. So comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Okay. And then the last one. So the last one, the more formal one, as usually we start with the, the question, comment, how? Okay. And then here you can see that you will have this vous, and then you will have the verb, appeler, and then you will have the vous here. So that's, it's a bit tricky at the beginning, but then just try to remember that because it will be always the same way uh, to produce or to create a question when you will have these impersonal verbs, okay? Comment vous appelez-vous? Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay, first one. Vous vous appelez comment? Second one. Comment est-ce que vous vous appelez? Last one. Comment vous appelez-vous? Okay? 
The passé composé form of the verb avoir, avoir is to have, so it's quite important. So let's discover it together. First form is j'ai eu. Okay, remember the difficulty with avoir at the past form, so first remember that we saw in the previous lesson, uh, lesson how to construct this passé composé form, so you've got to use whether avoir or être here, in that case it's avoir at the present form, and then the second part it's what we call the participe passé, okay, and then of course for avoir it's a bit tricky, you write it like that, e, u, But then phonetically, what you will have to pronounce is U. Okay? So you get J'ai eu. All right? J'ai eu. Tu as eu. Il a eu. Masculine form. Il a eu. Feminine form. Elle a eu. So here, let's make the little liaison, the little link between everything. Nous avons eu. Nous avons eu. Vous avez eu. Vous avez eu. Ils ont eu. Elles ont eu. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai eu. Tu as eu, il a eu, feminine form, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Le passé composé, and especially the form for être, the verb être, être is to be, remember. So we saw previously how to construct this passé composé form, okay? So I won't explain that again. If you don't know how to make it, then check the previous lessons because you can find the passé composé uh, lesson, okay? So we'll only focus on this form of être, être is to be, okay? And the first form is j'ai été. J'ai été. Tu as été. Tu as été. So masculine form here. Il a été. Feminine form. Elle a été. And then here, we'll make some liaison. Nous avons été. Nous avons été. Vous avez été. Vous avez été. Ils ont été. Okay, so you make the little liaison here as well, between the on and été with the t. Ont été. Ils ont été. Elles ont été. All right? So one thing that really, really you should remember is that even if it's être, to be, then you will have to construct it with avoir. Okay? So, j'ai été. Tu as été. Il a été. Elle a été. Nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. We will discover together the passé composé form of the verb aller, aller is to go. Okay, and remember that aller is uh, one of the tricky verbs in uh, the passé composé form because it will use être and not avoir as most of the verbs. Okay, so that's the reason why here you will have the form je suis allé. Okay, and then you can make the liaison here. Je suis allé. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Il est allé. You've got this little liaison between the two. Il est allé. Feminine form. Elle est allée. Okay, so have a look here. Remember, if you don't know that already, then I would advise you to check uh, the lesson uh, the, on uh, the passé composé that we did, we did uh, previously. Okay, so you've got to add this feminine mark at the end of your participe passé here, just because elle is feminine, and then you're using this être. 
verb to construct the passé composé. That's the reason why. Phonetically, it doesn't exist. You don't pronounce it, so you get « elle est allée » and then for the masculine form « il est allé ». So « aller » is pronounced the same way. But still, you have to write it. Okay? Same thing that if you get to put the, the plural form, then you will have to add this « s » mark of the plural at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay? Nous sommes allés. You don't pronounce it. Okay, but you write it. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Vous êtes allés. Same thing here. You put it, but you don't pronounce it. And then here, masculine form. Ils sont allés. So masculine plural. You put this S. Ils sont allés. Little liaison between the two. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. Feminine and plural here. Okay, uh, S, you don't pronounce them, but still, you've got to write them. And then this little liaison here. Elles sont allées. Okay, so let me repeat the whole thing for you. Je suis allé. Tu es allé. Il est allé. Elle est allée. Nous sommes allés. Vous êtes allés. Ils sont allés. Elles sont allées. The passé composé form of the verb parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay, so let's discover it right now. First person, j'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Ils ont parlé. Elles ont parlé. All right. So remember, passé composé, you've got to use two parts. The first one, avoir in that case, and then what we call participe passé. This participe passé form, as you can see, doesn't change for all the persons. You will have to put avoir at the present tense here. Okay. J'ai parlé. Tu as parlé. Il a parlé. Feminine form, elle a parlé. Nous avons parlé. Little liaison here. Nous avons parlé. Vous avez parlé. Same thing here. Little liaison. Ils ont parlé. Same thing here. Ils ont. Elles ont parlé. Okay. okay so we'll just see one more time uh, the passé composé form of finir. Finir is to finish or to end. Okay. And let's see how it goes. J'ai fini. J'ai fini. Fini. Tu as fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Feminine form. Elle a fini. Nous avons fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Remember, as we saw previously, you've got avoir here, and then you've got fini. So this participe passé form, the second form that you get to add to construct the passé composé. And fini doesn't change. It's here all the time, and it's written the same way. Okay, j'ai fini. Tu as fini. Il a fini. Elle a fini. Nous avons fini. Vous avez fini. Ils ont fini. Elles ont fini. Les unités de mesure. Ok, so let's start. Un millimètre. Les millimètres. Un centimètre. Les centimètres. Un mètre. Les mètres. Un kilomètre. Les kilomètres. Un mètre carré. Les mètres carrés. 
un litre, les litres, un gramme, les grammes, un kilo, un kilogramme, les kilos, les kilogrammes. Les faux amis, so they look the same in English and in French, but then the meaning is different. Okay, so let's start now. And then the first one, it will be travailler. Travailler. Okay, remember when you get this E and then double L like that on a vowel. Y. Travailler. Okay, travailler. And it means to work. Okay. Sympathique. Remember the H. H is not pronounced. Sympathique. Okay, and it means friendly, nice. Then, rester. Rester. Regular verb from the first group, easy to conjugate. Rester, okay, and it means to stay, to remain. Then, la monnaie. Monnaie, okay, final uh, not pronounced. La monnaie, okay, and it means small change. Le magasin. Le magasin. Okay, remember you've got only one S between two vowels. Then you get the sound Z, alright? And then the ending here is IN, so it's nasal, it goes in your nose, and it's un. Magasin. Okay? And it's shop. Alright? Then, la librairie. Okay, remember I here, li. Brairie, final E uh, not pronounced. La librairie, okay, and it's a bookshop. Then, la journée, la journée, final E uh, not pronounced, and it's day. Grand, final D not pronounced, okay, gr, 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 and then the nasal en, grand, okay, and it means big or tall. Then, gentil. So remember, this final L is not pronounced. Gentil. Gentil. And it's nice or kind. Then, attendre. Attendre. Remember, final E, uh, you don't insist on it. It just gives you the possibility to pronounce the dr, dr. Okay, so, attendre. Attendre. All right, and it's to wait. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 5, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover vocabulary regarding le corps humain. Le corps humain. So let's start now. La tête. La tête. L'épaule. L'épaule. Okay, so in that case, I did put this F here, just to indicate to you that it's feminine, okay, because you cannot see it here with the, the, the article L, okay, l'épaule. La poitrine, la poitrine. Le tronc, le tronc, okay, remember, final C is not pronounced here, le tronc, okay. L'estomac. L'estomac, okay, same thing here, final C, not pronounced, and then M means that this word, estomac, is masculine, okay, l'estomac. La hanche, la hanche, remember, H here is not pronounced, so you get the sound en, hanche, at the beginning. Le poignet. Le poignet. So this combination of ET at the end will basically open the sound. So you get E, E, poignet. Okay, remember, G, N, 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 poignet, le poignet. La cuisse. La cuisse. Double S and then two vowels before and after. It will give you a really strong S sound. Okay? Cuisse, cuisse, la cuisse. 
Le genou. Le genou. La jambe. La jambe. Ok, remember. A, M, when you combine these two, basically it's just like A, N, so it's nasal and it's en. Ok, so you get la jambe. La cheville. La cheville. Remember, double L like that after I, Y, Y. Cheville. Le pied. Le pied. Le dos. Le dos. Final S not pronounced. Ok. Le dos. Le cou. Le cou. Le bras. Le bras. Same thing here. Final S not pronounced. Le bras. Le coude. Le coude. So it's actually quite funny because the only difference between these two is this D, D at the end. Okay, so here in this one you've got le cou. Okay, and then the second one here is le coude. Okay, remember you don't insist on this final E. It only gives you the sound of D at the end. Le coude. Okay. Le nombril. Le nombril. Le doigt de pied. Le doigt de pied. La main. La main. So this combination, A, I, N, is quite interesting because it will give you the sound un. So it's really a nasal, it goes in your nose, okay? And it's un. Main. La main. Le doigt. Le doigt. Okay, so don't be frightened by this G because basically you don't pronounce it and then the final T you don't pronounce it. So the only thing you get to pronounce is this combination of three word or letters, sorry, here. D, O, E, okay? O, E, it's wa and then D, doua. That's the only thing. Doua, le doua, okay? Le pouce, le pouce, l'ongle. L'ongle, okay, I forgot to write it, but it's masculine, okay. L'ongle. La peau. La peau, okay. Remember this combination of three vowels. Well, it's quite rare in French, but then, well, well, you can see it's, but then, so, the sound that you will have to pronounce when you've got the, these three vowels combined together, it's the sound O, okay, so really simple, O. Okay, so you get la peau. Okay, la peau. That's it. If you want more, then the address is here. YouTube.com slash Imagier. And then the website is here. If you want to see more material, then write me a beautiful letter or a mail. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye. Le visage. The face. So we just saw the human body previously. And so we'll continue with le visage, if that's okay with you. Let's hope so. So let's start now. Les sourcils. Les sourcils. Okay, so it's quite strange because you get this L-S at the end, but then, well, you don't pronounce them. Les sourcils. L'œil. L'œil. Strange combination of vowels here, okay, and then you will get the sound e uh, and then y, oeil, all right, and it's masculine by the way, un oeil, l'oeil, okay, plural form, les yeux, okay, so that's the tricky thing when you compare the, the, the um, singular form and the plural form, okay, so l'oeil, singular, and then the plural, les yeux, Okay, you make this liaison between the two. Les yeux. Okay, final X not pronounced. Les yeux. Les cils. Les cils. Final S not pronounced. Les cils. La joue. 
la joue. Final E uh, not pronounced here. La joue. La gorge. La gorge. Okay, remember when you get this combination G and O, you get the sound go, go. Okay, so gor, gorge. And then G and E gives J. La gorge. La gorge. Le front. Final T not pronounced. Le front. Okay, remember this nasal O N on on on. Le front. Le menton. Okay, same thing here. So you get two nasal. The first one here en, and then the second one here on. Le menton. L'oreille. Remember, when you get this I, L, L, and then a vowel, it's I, I, l'oreille, all right? And it's feminine, by the way. Une oreille, l'oreille. Le nez. So remember, when you get this combination, E, Z, here, at the end of a word, it's E, le nez, le nez. La bouche. So remember, C-H combined together will give you this sh, sh sound. La bouche. Okay? La lèvre. Remember, accent grave here. E, E, really open. La lèvre. La lèvre. La bouche, again, I don't know why, don't ask me, <laughs> I was tired when I made this one, so, la bouche, one more time. La langue, remember, when we've got this G, and then U, and then E, we get the sound G, G, because when you combine this G and then E, remember, it was the sound J, okay, so you get to put this U between the two to get the sound G, G. So you get la langue, langue. Okay? La dent, final T not pronounced. La dent. Les cordes vocales. Les cordes vocales. So you can notice that as usual in French, you've got this mark of the plural at the end, S and then S here as well, but you don't pronounce them, okay? Les cordes vocales. Indicateur de temps. So if you want to introduce some uh, sentences or concepts at the past, present, or future tenses, then you will have to use them. So let's start now with the past, le passé, okay? And then the first one is hier. Hier means yesterday, okay? Hier. So remember, this H here is not pronounced, okay? So, hier. Then, la semaine dernière, okay? So it's last week, okay? But then if you look carefully, we've got la semaine. So, semaine means week, okay? And then, dernière is coming after, okay? So, la semaine dernière. And in that case, if you look carefully as well, you get dernière, so it's the feminine form, because la semaine, la, is a feminine word. Okay, so la semaine dernière, last week. And then we get this autrefois, so it could be translated like in olden days or in olden times, okay? Autrefois, so a-u, autrefois, final s not pronounced, okay? Autrefois. Then for the present now, we've got aujourd'hui, means today, okay? So don't be afraid by this word because it looks a bit scary if you look at it like that, but uh, take the time to, well, divide it. So the first one, a u o, jour, and then dui, okay? Ash is not pronounced, so you only get this dui thing. O, jour, dui, aujourd'hui, and it means today, okay? Then, cette semaine, okay, so we've got here what we call an adjective demonstratif, okay, this, cette, okay, and it's at, at the feminine form, cette 
and then semaine, week, this week, cette semaine. All right, and then maintenant, okay, normally we tend not to pronounce this e, uh, okay, so we get this maintenant, maintenant, okay, now. For the future now, we've got demain, and it means tomorrow. Demain, remember, when you combine this R-E-N, you get the sound un. Demain, demain. Okay? Then, la semaine prochaine. So it's next week. Okay? And as we had for the past tense here, we had la semaine dernière. Okay? So last week and dernière was coming after semaine. Exactly the same concept. So you will have to put prochaine, so it's the feminine form here, after la semaine, okay? So next week, la semaine prochaine. Mm -hmm. And then bientôt, okay? Remember you put this accent circumflex, but you don't write it. Uh, you, sorry, you write it, but you don't pronounce it. And then the final T is not pronounced. Bientôt, okay? And then you could translate this bientôt as soon, Okay, so something that will happen in the future. All right, so let's see them one more time. First one, hier. Second one, la semaine dernière. Then, autrefois, aujourd'hui, cette semaine, maintenant. Or then, maintenant, okay. Demain, la semaine prochaine, and then, bientôt. L'expression de la quantité. So it's quite important, so I would like you to take a few minutes to watch carefully this video. And we'll start right now. L'expression de la quantité. So the first thing that we'll discover together, it's plusieurs. So plusieurs means several, okay? And so the way you will have to construct it is that after that you will have to add an a nom, a noun, okay, but then keep in mind that it should be at the plural form, okay, so several, and then followed by a noun at the plural form, so let's see a few examples now, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, okay, so remember, j'ai invité, so it's the past form uh, of invité to invite, okay, plusieurs, and then amis, friends, Okay. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. Second example. Il y a, il y a, there is, plusieurs enfants, kids, dans le jardin. In the garden. Il y a plusieurs enfants dans le jardin. Okay. And then, elle a fait plusieurs gâteaux. So, faire here at the passé composé form. Plusieurs, faire, sorry, it means to, to do, okay? Plusieurs gâteaux, cake, okay? So what you can see here is that ami here is with S, so it's the plural form, okay? Here, right after plusieurs, you've got enfant with S at the plural form, and then here you've got that gâteau with X, so it's the plural form, all right? So let's see now the second one. Uh, quelque, you don't pronounce the final S here, Quelque means few, okay? And same thing as we had previously, you will have to add a noun at the plural form, okay? So let's see the first example. J'ai rencontré, rencontré is to meet, so it's the past form. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues, colleagues. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues. Okay, second example. Nous avons, so it's avoir, to have at the present form. Quelques petits problèmes, petits, small, problème, problem, avec lui, with him. Nous avons quelques petits problèmes avec lui. Ok, and then the last example. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Oh, oh, we get two dots here, I don't know why, but only one is enough. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Ok So, manger here is to eat, past form, and then bonbon, candies. So, same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got collègue with S, so plural form. Okay, here it's quite interesting because we've got this adjective petit, small, little, 
but then it's still at the plural form with s and problem at the plural form as well okay and then bonbon here at the plural form with s as well okay so now other possibility would be ne and then aucun masculine form or aucune feminine form so no or not any okay and after that you will have to put a name or a noun sorry at the singular form okay so ne aucun ne aucune plus a noun at the singular form all right so let's see the first example elle ne veut aucun conseil okay so you can see here that it's elle ne veut so she doesn't want okay uh, vouloir is to want aucun so not any no and then conseil it's advice okay so elle ne veut aucun conseil other example je n'ai eu aucun problème okay so here et eu so it's the verb to have at the passé composé form okay je n'ai eu aucun problème problème problem so i didn't have any problem il ne fait aucune erreur il ne fait faire is to do and it's the present form aucune error error is mistake all right so if you look carefully here you get ne and then aucun okay so it's at the masculine form because conseil is a masculine word here it's quite interesting because as usual in french when we've got this ne and then we've got a vowel after so it can be quite tricky so in most of the cases this e uh, will disappear okay so you take it away but then still aucun is coming here all right and then it's at the masculine form because problem is a masculine word all right and then the last example well you've got the first part ne okay not modified because faire start with f so no problem but then it here you've got this aucune okay aucune so because uh, erreur is a feminine word so you will have to put this aucune all right so let's proceed now un peu or peu and it means a few or few okay so we'll be constructed with la préposition de so you will have to put this de after and then you will have to put the noun without the article okay so if you want to construct this a sentence with a few or few so remember un peu or then peu then don't forget to put this de and the noun without the article okay then if you want to use this autant it means as much same construction you will have to put this de and the name or the noun sorry without the article all right so as much we use this autant de and the noun without the article all right if you want to use moins moins means less same thing here you will have to use de after and the noun without the article all right so remember less in french it's moins de and the noun without the article if you want to use plus more okay in some cases you will have to pronounce it plus okay so you will see that a bit later de and then the noun without the article all right remember more plus or then plus de and the noun without the article if you want to use beaucoup beaucoup means a lot of it look it looks a bit strange huh? beaucoup like that remember you don't pronounce the final p okay and then you get this combination of vowels e a u and you get the sound o so technically it's beaucoup okay so it's not difficult to 
produce orally. Beaucoup, a lot of. Okay. Same construction. You will have to put de after, and then the noun without the article. Okay. A lot of beaucoup de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use trop, and trop means too many. Okay. Then you will have to put de, and the noun without the article. Okay. Remember, too many. Trop, don't pronounce the final P. Trop, de, and the noun without the article. All right? And then, assez. Assez means enough. Okay? Assez. Remember, two vowels here, A uh, and then E, uh, and then double S. So it's really strong, the S. Assez. Assez. Okay? Assez. So, same construction, de, and the name. Or the, sorry, the noun without the article. Okay, so enough, assez, de, and the noun without the article. Well, we'll see few colors, les couleurs, okay, so not all the colors because we're just starting. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Blanc, blanche. Okay, so I wanted to put for each color the masculine form here. And then the feminine form here. Okay, so here masculine, blanc, don't pronounce the final C, and then blanche. Okay, remember when you combine this CH, you get the sound sh, blanche. Okay, so blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. So it's quite funny because you will have to add this E. Uh, at the end of noir for the feminine form, but then you don't pronounce it. Okay, so phonetically it is exactly the same. Noir, noir. Okay? Gris, don't pronounce the S, but then for the feminine form, grise. Remember? Grise. Alright? So when you add this E, uh, basically it gives you the pronunciation or the possibility to pronounce the previous letter here. It's z, gris. Alright, so gris, masculine form, feminine form, gris. Bleu, bleu. So same thing that we had for noir, you just add this e uh, at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Bleu, bleu. All right, so let's see them one more time. Blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. Gris, grise. Bleu, bleu. Okay, so let's continue. Bleu foncé. Bleu foncé. Okay, so foncé, this adjective, well, basically it's will be like dark, okay? Bleu foncé. Bleu clair. So same thing here, this clair adjective is like light, okay? Bleu clair. Jaune. Okay, so it will be the same at the masculine and the feminine form. Jaune. Jaune. Rouge. So same thing here. Same form for the masculine and the feminine. Rouge. Remember, G E J J J. Rouge. Vert. So masculine form. Don't pronounce the final T. Vert. Feminine form. Verte. So listen carefully. I don't say T, but it's T. Verte. Verte. Okay, so as usual, this final E uh, only gives you the possibility to pronounce this T, T, verte, okay? Marron, same thing for the masculine and the feminine form, marron. Les verbes impersonnels, so they are really useful and it's quite important to see them. And so we'll focus on three verbs, the first one, être, to be, second one, faire, to do, and the last one, avoir, to have, okay? And so, the important thing with the, these uh, 
concept or this idea, les verbes impersonnels, is that, well, you will see in the examples, uh, they are not connected to a person. And that's the main, main concept. So even if in French we use this il, so the pronom personnel il, okay, technically if you want to translate that directly in English, it would be translated by it. Okay, but then in French we use this il instead of it. Okay, so let's see now for être, for instance. So if you use this il est, uh, you, will, you, you, will <laughs> you will use this structure if you want to uh, talk about the time. Okay, for instance, we've got the, the first example here. Il est tard, tard is late. Okay, so il est tard, it is late. Il est tard, okay? So even if we use this il, so it doesn't have the concept of he as normally we have, okay? It's really this impersonal form, okay? And then il est tôt, it is early, okay? Same thing, that's the reason why we, we, we use this il form when we put the, the, when we give the time, okay? Il est douze heures, or then il est midi, douze, twelve heure, hours, okay? And then this midi, it's noon, okay? So, il est douze heures, il est midi, all right? Second example is faire, and then it's really uh, useful to use this faire. So, il fait, uh, if you want to talk about the weather, pour parler du temps, okay? Pour parler du temps. So, for instance, il fait chaud, okay? Chaud, warm, hot, okay? So, il fait chaud. So if you want to say, it is hot, it is warm, then that's the structure you will have to use. Same thing if you want to say that it is cold, okay, froid is cold, il fait froid, okay, il fait chaud, il fait froid, all right? And then if you want to talk about the, the weather, okay, in that case it's beau, okay, it's a nice weather, il fait beau, okay, the opposite, mauvais, bad, il fait Mauvais. All right. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait beau. So it's a beautiful weather. Il fait mauvais. It's a bad weather. Okay. And the last one, avoir. Avoir. So if you, well, we did introduce that a little uh, bit, bit earlier, but then this il y a structure is quite useful because you can, well, situer dans l'espace. Parler du temps, parler de l'heure. So if you want to uh, locate in, uh, into space, they say where, where things are, or then parler du temps, talk about the weather, or then parler de l'heure, talk about the time. So that's the structure you will have to use, this il y a, il y a. Okay, so let's see one example. Il y a un parc ici. Okay, so there is un parc, a park, ici, here. Il y a des nuages, clouds, il y a des nuages. So, even if we've got this il y a, okay, remember that it can be for the singular, or then it can be for the plural as well, so this a won't change. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil, sun. Il y a du soleil. So, there is sun. Il y a de la neige. Snow, il y a de la neige. Okay? And then, if you want to talk about the, the time or a period, il y a 15 ans. So in that case, it's quite interesting because when we use this il y a 15 ans, technically it's 15 years ago. So this il y a will mean ago. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Okay, voyager is to travel. You've got the passé composé form here. En Chine, in China. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. So let's see them one more time. Il y a un parc ici. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil. Il y a de la neige. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Les démonstratifs. Les démonstratifs, so we'll see two type of demonstrative. The first one will be adjectif, demonstratif, okay? And then the second one will be pronom, demonstratif, 
All right, so let's start. So we'll see for the adjective demonstrative, the masculine singular form, feminine singular form, masculine plural form, and then feminine plural form. Okay, masculin singulier, féminin singulier, masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. So let's see how they are. So when we talk about les démonstratifs, technically it would be translated in English like this. Okay, uh, but then of course we've got in French the difference between the masculine and the feminine form, and then masculine plural and feminine plural. Okay, so we'll see them. Now, the first one, so for the masculine, so this, this, okay, adjective will be translated in French with ce, so it's the basic form, or set, okay? So you will have to use this second option here, this set, when you will have a name or a noun after, that will start whether with a vowel or then with h plus a vowel. Okay, remember this H letter in French is not really pronounced, okay? So it does it does indicate to you that well when you get the, a word starting with the, the sound of a vowel, then you will have to use this set adjective. Okay? And then feminine form is set. Like that. So it's quite interesting because if you listen carefully, the masculine form here set and the feminine form here, set, you write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way. All right? For the plural form, so masculine plural, it would be se, okay? And then feminine plural, good news, it's the same. So we've got one form here, se, and the option set, when you've got a noun starting with a vowel after, and then set, feminine form, and for the plural you get only one form, okay, and it's se, okay, remember, open, se, 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 okay. One example, ce livre, so this book, okay, livre is book, uh, here livre is masculine, so you will have to use the se, okay, and then it doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so it's the basic ce. This book, ce livre. And now we've got ordinateur. Ordinateur is a masculine word, means computer, okay? But then if you look carefully, it starts with o, okay, a vowel. So this ce ordinateur wouldn't be possible, so we've got to use the second option, as we saw previously, so it's set written like that, okay? Cet ordinateur, this computer. Third possibility here, we've got homme, man, okay? Uh, but then O is here, we've got this H letter, remember H is not pronounced, okay? So you've got the sound of O at the beginning of this word, okay? Cet homme, so that's the reason why you will have to use the set. So it's masculine, but still set homme. So now, feminine word, femme, woman. No problem about that because we've got only one option for this at the feminine form, and it's set, written like that. Set femme. Same thing here, if you've got a word like organisation, well it's the same in English, so it starts with a vowel but it doesn't change anything for the feminine uh, demonstrative here, okay? Cette organisation, cette organisation. And then plural, so whether it's masculine, so we've got friends here at the masculine form, so masculine plural and then friends here at the feminine plural form, okay? But then the adjective demonstratif here, as you can see, will be the same. Ses amis, ses amis. All right? And it's quite funny in a way because if you only listen to these two things here, ses amis and then ses amis, you don't have really any phonetical um, information regarding the fact whether it's masculine or 
feminine. That's the way it is. Sorry about that. But so let's continue now with the uh, demonstrative. So we'll see now uh, the pronouns. Okay, so same thing. We'll see the masculin singulier, then féminin singulier, then masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. Okay, so pronouns. Okay, so it does mean that you will have to use these pronouns instead of the name. Okay, so for the masculine form, we will have celui-ci and then celui-là okay so we'll see the difference of use but then celui-ci celui-là uh, in english it would be directly translated as this one okay so you don't want to repeat uh, the name or uh, the thing that was previously stated so you use this this one okay in english it's easier in french it's a bit more tricky because we will have this celui okay and then C and LA, so you'll see that normally C is coming first and then LA is coming next, okay? Celui-ci, celui-là, this one, all right? Same thing with the, the feminine form, celle-ci, celle-là, all right? And then for the masculine plural, ceci. Okay, remember, final X is not pronounced, so you get the sound ce, ceci, and then cela. All right, feminine plural, celle-ci, okay, don't pronounce the final S, celle-ci, celle-là. All right, so let's see a few examples now. So if you ask a question, quel est mon livre? Okay, what is my book or which one is my book? All right, and then the answer could be Votre livre, your book, c'est celui-ci, this one, okay? Votre livre, c'est celui-ci, okay? And then normally when you talk or when you say that, you tend to indicate that with your finger as well. So you point the book. Votre livre, c'est celui-ci. Où est ma place? Where is my seat? Où est ma place? C'est celle-là. Okay. Same thing. You tend to point it at the same time. Okay. C'est celle-là. All right. So you've got to remember that we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine. Okay. So singular and plural and then we'll have the difference between this C okay the first option the nearest one okay and then this la second option so it's not the nearest one okay la description avec C so let's start so if you want to use this C option to make a description so C technically would be directly translated as as it is or this is okay but then in French you will have to add after that the adjective but the adjective should be all the time at the masculine form okay so remember if you want to describe something okay you can use this say and that's really you know a common way to 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 describe things okay it is this is but then remember the adjective that will come after should be at the masculine form okay so we'll see a few examples now and the first one would be the option to to uh, describe uh, un lieu a place okay so let's see now c'est chaud okay it is hot warm huh? could be an option as well c'est chaud it's warm okay c'est froid cold it is cold. C'est beau. Beau is beautiful. Okay? And then c'est tranquille, quiet. Okay? So what you can see here is that we've got adjectives like chaud, froid, beau, and then tranquille. They are all at the masculine form. Okay? Even if, I mean, the place uh, would be feminine and you want to describe it, remember that it should be all the time at the masculine form. Okay? 
Let's see another example. So if you want to describe a situation, for instance, okay, it would be an option. So ideal, ideal, c'est ideal. Formidable, c'est formidable. C'est parfait. So it's perfect. And then c'est injuste, injuste, the opposite is of uh, ju juste, okay? And it's not fair, unfair, okay? So c'est idéal, c'est formidable, c'est parfait, c'est injuste. Same thing here, okay? Remember that all these adjectives are at the feminine form. Okay? Let's continue now and see. So it could be uh, for an object as well. You could describe an object, an objet. So let's see now. C'est cher. Cher is expensive. C'est cher. C'est utile. Utile, useful. C'est beau. Beautiful. C'est adapté. Adapted. Okay? C'est cher. C'est utile. C'est beau. C'est adapté. Remember, all these adjectives are at the feminine oh sorry the masculine form i'm getting tired now all right so at the masculine form like i did say previously okay so let's see now another option so if you want to describe a dish okay you're eating and you want to describe a dish un plat okay so c'est très bon okay très is very and then bon is good okay c'est très bon C'est bon marché. Bon marché, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, this adjective here, so it's a composed adjective, and it means cheap. Okay, c'est bon marché. C'est salé. So remember, it's quite important because we've got the same adjective here without the accent. So if you don't put the accent, it means dirty, and then you pronounce it sale. But in that case here, okay, you put the accent and it's quite important because in that case it means salted, okay, salé, okay, c'est salé, c'est délicieux, c'est délicieux, okay, and then same thing here, if you look all these adjectives, they are at the masculine form, okay, so, the second option would be to put this structure at the negative form, which is not that difficult because technically you just keep, well, your structure, you just add as usual the first n and then pa before and after the verb, okay? Then, same thing here, you will put this adjective at the masculine form, okay? So we will basically just see one more time all the examples we had previously, but then at the negative form. So, if you want to describe a place, ce n'est pas chaud, ce n'est pas froid, ce n'est pas beau, ce n'est pas tranquille. Situation, ce n'est pas idéal, ce n'est pas formidable. Ce n'est pas parfait. Ce n'est pas injuste. An object. Ce n'est pas cher. Ce n'est pas utile. Ce n'est pas beau. Ce n'est pas adapté. And then a dish. Ce n'est pas très bon. Ce n'est pas bon marché. Ce n'est pas salé. Ce n'est pas délicieux. La salle de séjour. So let's start now. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. So remember, it's a bit tricky, this word. Fauteuil. Teuil. Fauteuil. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Okay, one more time. Le rideau. 
le fauteuil, le coussin, la cheminée, la télévision. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. OK, one more time. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. Le sol, la table, le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque. One more time. Le sol, la table, le tapis. Remember final S not pronounced. Le tapis, le canapé. La bibliothèque. La cuisine. So in the previous lesson, we were in the, la salle de séjour. And now we're still in the house, but it's la cuisine. So let's discover what we have. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier, l'étagère, ok, so let's repeat them, la cuisine, le congélateur, le réfrigérateur, le frigo, l'évier, l'étagère. L'égouttoir, l'armoire murale, le four, la cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle. Ok, let's see them one more time. L'égouttoir, l'armoire murale, le four. La cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle, le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir. Ok, let's see them one more time. Le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir, le décapsuleur, l'ouvre-boîte, le tire-bouchon, le presse-citron. La passoire. All right, let's repeat them together. Le décapsuleur. L'ouvre-boîte. Le tire-bouchon. Le presse-citron. La passoire. La râpe. Le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie. Ok, let's see them. La râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau. À pâtisserie. Les fruits et légumes. So fruits and vegetables. So I hope you're ready because we are starting 
right now. Les fruits. L'orange. So I did put this little F just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay? L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. Okay? So les fruits. L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. L'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue, right. l'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue. La prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot, la cerise, la prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot. So by the way, I didn't put it, but it's masculine, just for your information. La cerise, la poire, le raisin, le marron, la date, la poire, le raisin, le marron, la date, les baies. La fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro, la groseille rouge. I just noticed that I've been making a little mistake here. Sorry about that. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro. La groseille rouge. La myrtille. La mûre des marais. La canneberge. Le cassis. L'airelle rouge. La myrtille. La mûre des marais. La canneberge. Le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, l'oignon, le chou, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, so for your information, artichaut is masculine, l'oignon, same thing for oignon, it's masculine, it's masculine. Le chou. La tomate. Le chou-fleur. La pomme de terre. Le poivron. L'aubergine. 
la tomate, le chou-fleur, la pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine. For your information, aubergine is a feminine word. L'épinard, le fenouil, le champignon. L'épinard, so it's masculine, le fenouil, le champignon. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll discover together les Comparatif. So if you want to compare in French, well, this is the lesson you should definitely watch. So in this structure, in this lesson, sorry, we'll discover three type of structures. The first one, avec un nom, with a noun. Second one, avec un adjectif, with an adjective. And the last one, avec un verbe with a verb. Okay, so if you want to compare with these structures, then we'll start with the first one, avec un nom. Okay, so if you want to compare with a noun, then remember that if you want to say more, then you will have to use this plus, de, and then here you will put your noun, after that followed by que, than, and the rest of the structure. Okay, let's see one example. J'ai plus de chance que vous. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Okay. Chance is luck. Okay. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Vous is you. All right. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Amis, friends. Nous, nous avons plus de livres que. Nous avons plus de livres que. Okay, so if I want to be really honest, and I will be, um, there is a strange thing in French language with this plus. Okay, because in some cases you will have to pronounce the final S, and in other cases you won't. So, what I would advise you to do, because uh, we are at a uh, beginning stage, um, it would be to pronounce it each time, especially with this type of structure. So, if you want to construct it followed by a noun, then in that case, my advice would be pronounce it. Okay? After that, if you get the chance to go in uh, French-speaking countries or meet French-speaking persons, then you can listen to them and you will learn how to use it or not. Okay? But the first advice would be, if you are using this kind of uh, structure with nouns, then pronounce it. Okay? So let's see now if you want to say as. Okay? So if you want to compare, so it would be autant de followed by the noun, then with this que, then, and you continue your structure, okay? J'ai autant de chances que vous. Okay, so I kept exactly the same uh, sentences, just to make it more clear. Okay, j'ai autant de chances que vous. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Okay, so as usual in French, you know, you've got this de here, but then if the word, you know, coming right after is starting with a vowel or h, h plus a vowel, then you should definitely take this e uh, away, okay? Il a autant d'amis que moi. Nous avons autant de livres que, okay? And then same thing here, as you can see here, you've got this que, okay, but then followed by a vowel, in that case, a uh, needs to go away, and then you get this que. All right. Then if you want to say less, it's moins in French, so no discussion about the S here, don't pronounce it, okay? Moins de, and then you put your noun, que, dan, and the rest of the structure. So let's see. J'ai moins de chance que vous. J'ai Moins de chance que vous. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Il a 
moins d'amis que moi. Nous avons moins de livres que. Nous avons moins de livres que. All right, so that's it. Now let's see if you want to compare and use a structure with an adjective. Donc avec un adjectif, okay. First structure, if you want to use this more, okay. So you will use this plus, and in that case you don't pronounce the s, okay. Plus. Then you put your adjective, and after that you put this que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so let's see now. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Rapide is fast. Okay. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Fort is strong. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. Okay. And in that case, well... You make this little link, little liaison between the two, so you hear a little bit this S, okay? Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right, so let's see them one more time. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right? And then, aussi, then you put your adjective que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so the same examples. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. Okay, so I'll repeat them. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. All right. And then, moins, same thing here, remember, we don't pronounce the final S. Then you put the adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes Moins intéressé que vous. Ok, one more time. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. All right. And so the last structure, if you want to compare with a verb, then in that case, remember, plus will be with the S. So pronounce it plus que. Ok, let's see now. Elle parle plus que toi. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. And then, autant que. All right. So it goes like, elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons autant que vous. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons autant que vous. And the last one. Moins que. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. One more time. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. And this is it. Okay. The next lesson is here on YouTube slash Imagier. And then the website is here. Imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. 
Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together, let me click, <laughs> le passé composé of the verb faire. Faire is to do and then we'll see together the passé composé form. So we, we, we did introduce the passé composé in the unit 5, okay, but I just want to check and uh, make it clear that everything is okay for you. So we'll start with faire. It will be quite fast, but still quite useful. Let's start. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Vous avez fait. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right. So to make it clear, one more time, remember that in most of the cases for the passé composé, you will have to use avoir at the present form, followed by this participe passé form. So if you're not sure how to construct that, Check uh, Unité 5 and then uh, you will see the, the, the lesson that explains everything, okay? But then we'll repeat it one more time. J'ai fait. So remember, final T is not pronounced. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Little link between the two. Nous avons. Nous avons fait. Same thing here. Vous avez fait. And same thing here. Ils ont. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right? So that's it. It was the verb faire at the passé composé. Really important. If that's okay with you and if it's clear, then you can continue. And the website is youtube.com slash imagier. Or then more material, imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Well, basically it's for important verbs. And this one, venir, to come. Is quite important, especially because it's a bit tricky in a way. So we'll see why. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venues. Okay, so if you remember carefully when we introduced the uh, passé composé uh, construction in the unit 5, I told you that most of the verbs uh, were constructed with avoir, but then we had the list of the verbs that requires this être verb. Venir is among them, okay, so that's the reason why you put être here at the present form, okay, and then remember that if you get to put être, then have a look at the feminine form here, you will have to add this final E, okay, feminine singular, but then for the plural form, you will have to add this S here, here, okay, and then for the feminine plural, you will have to add this E, S, all right, but then the good news, there is a good news, yes, <laughs> it's that uh, you, you don't pronounce them, so basically you get the pronunciation venu, 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 and then the same thing, venu, you don't pronounce this final E. Uh. Venu, you don't pronounce the final S. Venu, you don't pronounce it, the final S either. Same thing here, venu, and same thing here, venu, you don't pronounce a uh, S. So phonetically, you only have one way to pronounce it, but remember, if you want to write correctly, you will have to put E uh, for the feminine, S for the plural, a S for the feminine plural. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venues. So we'll see together uh, le passé composé form of pouvoir, pouvoir, can. And then uh, we'll see how it goes at the past form, this uh, passé composé form. Okay, so, j'ai pu, tu as pu, il a pu, elle a pu, nous avons pu, vous avez pu, ils ont pu, 
elles ont pu. Ok, so if you remember carefully, as I said, uh, in unit 5, when I introduced this uh, passé composé form, most of the verbs are using avoir and the present form, so that's the case here. And then after that, you've got to put the participe passé. Same thing, it was introduced in unit 5, so check it if you want. And then for pouvoir, it's a bit tricky because pouvoir becomes pu, like that. Only two letters, okay? But then it doesn't change. If you look carefully, then it's always the same form. Okay, so let's see them together. J'ai pu. Tu as pu. Remember, you don't pronounce the S here. Il a pu. Elle a pu. Nous avons pu. Little link, little liaison between the two. Nous avons pu. Vous avez pu. Same thing here. Little liaison between the two. Ils ont pu. Same thing here. Elles ont pu. Le passé composé. And the verb is attendre. Attendre is to wait. Okay. And so we'll see the past form. So it's just some reviews that we are doing. Uh, but they are really important. So let's see how it goes now. J'ai attendu. Tu as Attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu. Ils ont attendu. Elles ont attendu. Alright, so if you remember, when I introduced the passé composé form, I told you that most of the verbs are using this avoir verb at the present form and then the participe passé. Okay, in that case... Attendre becomes attendu at the participe passé, and then that's the form you will have to add at the end. And it doesn't change here, as you can see. J'ai attendu. Tu as attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. So, two liaisons here. Nous avons attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu, same thing here, vous avez attendu, ok, vous avez attendu, then same thing here, ils ont attendu, ok, liaison here as well, ils ont attendu, ok, but make it fast, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. The passé composé of répondre, répondre is to answer and it's quite useful, so let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. All right, so it's not that difficult. Keep in mind that répondre, so the infinitive form, becomes répondu at the participe passé form. Okay, so the, this form that you will have to add each time here doesn't change. You know, you don't put the mask, you don't put, sorry, the feminine form or the plural form. You just keep it like that. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. Ok? Le passé composé, but this time it will be for the verb partir. Partir is to leave. Ok? And then you will see that it goes like that. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est partie. Nous sommes partis, vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Ok? Remember, partir belongs to this group of verbs that requires to use être instead of avoir for the passé composé form. And for that reason, you will have here, for example, when you've got the feminine form, you will have to put this final E uh, at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? If that's plural, like it is here, you will have to add S. Okay? And it's, if it's feminine plural, you will have to add this E uh, 
S at the end of your participe passive form. But um, when it comes to uh, phonetics, so what you will pronounce, the good news is that you won't pronounce these E, uh, S or E, uh, S. Okay, so it will go like parti, parti, and then here, same thing, parti, parti, and parti. Okay, so phonetically it's not that difficult, but then if you want to write correctly, remember to put E for the feminine form, S for the plural form, E, S for the feminine plural form. Okay, so let's see that together. Je suis parti, tu es parti, il est parti, elle est parti, nous sommes parti. Vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Ok That's it. YouTube.com slash Imagier. Next lesson is waiting for you. And then the website is here. www.imagier.net Au revoir. Le passé composé of the verb savoir. Savoir is to know. It's quite used and quite useful. Okay, but then keep in mind that this lesson regarding passé composé is the last one. Okay, so if you're not sure how to make it, remember that in unit 5 I did a big 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 lesson regarding le passé composé and then in unit 6 few verbs were, uh, well it was possible to see them, okay, but then after that we won't see le passé composé Again. All right, so let's start now. Le passé composé, savoir, goes like J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su. Elle a su. Nous avons su. Vous avez su. Ils ont su. Elles ont su. All right, so for the last time, in most of the cases for the verbs, we will use avoir and then we'll use the participe passé form. In that case, savoir becomes su. Okay, so that's the reason why that's the form that you will see at the end of each forms here. Okay, and then avoir should be at the present form. All right, j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su. Vous avez su, ils ont su, elles ont su. Futur, simple. So basically it's the future tense, okay? When you want to express something that you will do, let's see how we will make it in French. So we'll see the difference between the through, uh, sorry, the three groups of verbs that we've got in French. The first one, first group, is ending with Air. Remember, parler, to talk, to speak. So, the idea is that in that case, for this group, you don't change anything. So, you just keep the basic form, the infinitive form, all right? And after that, you will put at the end A, I, for je. Okay, so this will be your ending. So, you just don't touch the verb, I mean, don't touch the infinitive form, you just put at the end this ending, okay? Second group of verbs, finir, to finish, to end. Well, the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verbs. You don't modify anything, you just keep your infinitive form and you will put the ending, ae, here as well. So you get, je parlerai, and then you will get, je finirai. So it's not that difficult for these to first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this e, uh, so the vowel e, uh, okay? As usual, what we'll do, we'll take this e uh, away. So we get now l, i, r, and after that, we just put the ending, je, Lirai. All right? So it will apply for most of the verbs. Of course, because it's French language, it's not all the verbs. We've got exceptions, but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson. But still, that's the, that's the idea of uh, constructed it. If it's ending with this uh, vowel, take it away. All right? You get that. 
and after that we just put the ending. All right, so let's see. The ending for je will be a i. All right, and you pronounce it a. Remember, open a. Okay. The ending for tu will be a s. You don't pronounce the s, so you pronounce a. All right. The ending for il l will be a. Okay. Phonetically, exactly the same thing as for tu. Okay. A a. The ending for nous will be o n s as usual. Okay. Remember, you don't pronounce the final s. You get the on sound. Okay. Nasal in your nose. On on. All right. The ending for vous will be as usual a z, but then you pronounce it e. Okay. And then the ending for il l will be o n t. You don't pronounce the final t, so you get the nasal. On. All right. So, e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay. So let's see how it will go with parler, parler to speak, to talk. Okay. Je parlerai. Tu parleras. Il parlera. Elle parlera. Nous parlerons. Vous parlerez, ils parleront, elles parleront. All right. So as I said, just keep your basic form and just put your endings. Okay. E, a, a, on, e, on. That's it. Let's see now. Choisir to choose. Second group of verbs. Je choisirai. Tu choisiras. Il choisira. Elle choisira. Nous choisirons, vous choisirez, ils choisiront, elles choisiront. Same thing, remember, just keep the infinitive form, the basic form, and just, just put your endings at the end. <laughs> e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay? Let's see now. Écrire, écrire is to write. Okay, so third group, but then remember, as we saw with lire, lire, we took away this final e, uh, okay, and only with the first part, we just add after that the endings. So, j'écrirai, tu écriras, il écrira, elle écrira, nous écrirons, vous écrirez, ils écriront, elles écriront. All right. So it's not that difficult. Okay. As I said, you take away the e, and after that, e, a, a, on, e, on. All right. So of course we've got some exceptions. As I said, the first one is être. Être will become sœur. So the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change. But the endings will be the same. Okay, so the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same. Okay, so the only thing that you've got to remember is that être will become sœur. So that's the part that you will first, you will have to put and then you will combine it with the ending and it will become je serai. Okay, remember, ending for je was a i, je serai. Okay, avoir is becoming or. Okay, so tu auras. Aller will become ir. Il ira, elle ira. Faire will become fer, f e r. So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sor, s a u r. Vous saurez. Voir will become ver. Ils verront, elles verront. All right. So remember, être is becoming sœur. Avoir becomes or. Aller ir, faire, faire, savoir, 
sort, voir, vers. Okay? But then, after all these forms, you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously. So, AI for JE, AS for A, A, ONS, EZ, ONT. Other exceptions? Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir, voudre. Tu voudras. Pleuvoir, pleuvre. Il pleuvra. Devoir, d'œuvre. Nous devrons. Venir, viendre. Vous viendrez. Courir, cours. Ils, elles, courront. Ok? So, pouvoir is becoming pour. And it, mean, it means can. Vouloir, voudre. To want. Pleuvoir, to rain, pleuvre. Devoir, to have to, d'oeuvre. Venir, to come, viendre. Courir, to run, cours. Okay, and then, as we saw previously, you only add after the endings. Alright, so, remember one more time, je, ending for je, is ai. Tu, ending for tu, is as. Il, elle, a, nous, o, n, s, vous, e, z, il, elle, o, n, t. Ok? So, e, a, a, on, e, on. Le pronom complément en. So, let's see now. Um, we can use this uh, pronom complément en, whether with a, an article partitif, so this some concept, or then it can be an article indéfini, a, in English it would be a, un, une, or then it can be at the negative form, so that's what we'll see, and then we'll start first with l'article partitif, okay? So let's see now how we can make it. So if you have a question like Nicolas, mange du pain. So, of course, first possibility that you would have to, you could have, would be to answer, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So, mange is to eat du pain, some bread. Okay, in that case, that's really the partitive form. Okay, so you don't want to specify the quantity, but it's some. Okay, so, of course, the first option that you would have would be to answer like that, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So you repeat everything. Normally, that's not the way we will do because we tend to replace things with pronouns when it's possible. Okay, so the first option would be to replace Nicolas in that case. You don't want to repeat Nicolas, so you can say oui, il, he, uh, instead of Nicolas because it's masculine, mange du pain. So that's the first step. Okay, the second step, you want to replace this du pain. Okay, so this partitive thing. And that's when this pronoun en is used. All right, so oui, il, en, mange. Okay, so in that case, you use this il just to avoid repeating Nicolas because it was previously stated. And then you want to use this en the pronoun, just to avoid repeating du pain, because it was in the question. Okay? Oui, il en mange. So, remember that this en pronoun should be before the verb. Okay? So, let's see now another example. In the first example, we had the masculine form, and now I wrote same sentence, but then here we've got de la salade. Okay? Salade is feminine word, so in that case it's not du 
but then it's de la, okay, but still it's the partitive form, some, okay. Nicolas mange de la salade, okay, so as we saw, first option would be oui, Nicolas mange de la salade, so you repeat the whole sentence. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas, oui, il mange de la salade, okay, and the last option, you don't want to repeat either Nicolas nor uh, de la salade, so you get oui, il en mange, okay. Let's see now if you've got de l'eau. Nicolas boit de l'eau. Oui, Nicolas boit de l'eau. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il boit de l'eau. Third option, will, sorry, oui, il en boit. Okay, same rule, en goes before the verb. Boire, here. It's the, the infinitive form is boire and it's to drink. Okay? De l'eau, some water. D'accord? Okay, let's continue now. Second structure, if you want to use le pronom en instead of an article indéfini. So let's see how it goes. In that case, you know, you've got a question. Nicolas mange un biscuit. So it's quite interesting because the difference between what we had previously with the, the, this partitif, some, uh, when you use this partitive form, you don't really um, give any information regarding the quantity. In that case, you use un, so that's clear, it's only one. Okay? Nicolas mange un biscuit. First answer, oui. Nicolas mange un biscuit. Same thing as previously, you just put everything again. Second possibility, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui. Il mange un biscuit. All right. Last option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas and you don't want to repeat biscuit. Okay. The, the difference here between what we saw with the partitif and now is that you've got the, here you've got the quantity. So you know exactly how many or how much. Okay. So you get to put that at the end of your sentence. Oui, il en. So you put your pronoun here before the verb. And after that, you put un. Il en mange un. All right? So let's see now if it's feminine. Une banane. Nicolas mange une banane? Answer. Oui, Nicolas mange une banane. Oui, il mange une banane. Oui, il en mange une. Okay, so the information that you've got now is that you will have to put the masculine or the feminine form after. Okay, here you put une because banane is a feminine word. All right? So let's see now. Nicolas mange des céréales. So here we've got the plural form. Oui, Nicolas mange des céréales. Oui, il mange des céréales. Oui, il en mange. All right. So basically, when you've got the plural form for des céréales here, you don't put anything after your verb. All right. So when you use this article indéfini, you will only need to put something after your verb if it's un or une or then in other cases, but we will come to that a bit later, okay? So, let's see now, la forme négative. Nicolas ne mange pas de céréales. Okay, so you've got the question, but here you've got the ne and then the pas, so you know that it's négative. Nicolas ne boit pas d'eau. So let's see the, the answers. Non, il n'en mange pas. Non, il n'en boit pas. Okay, so the concept is still the same. You put your pronoun here and here before your verb. And then, as usual in French, normally you should have your ne coming here. But then, look, the pronoun is starting, is starting with a vowel, it's starting with a. Okay, so you should take this a away. All right. Il n'en mange pas, il n'en boit pas. All right? 
And then le pronom en, well, it can replace the preposition de plus a noun, and especially a noun for a thing. Okay, so let's see now. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Okay, est-ce que Frédéric est content? Content is to be happy, satisfied, okay, de son nouvel new ordinateur, computer. D'accord? Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? All right, so it's exactly the same concept. You could answer, I mean, you could make a, a long, long answer uh, reusing every, every uh, object or everything in the, the, the question, but then in that case, we'll try to go a bit faster, and so we don't want, of course, to repeat de son nouvel ordinateur here, okay? So the concept is that we will use this pronoun en instead, oui, il, en, est, content. All right, so en, same thing here, before the verb, and then after that, of course, you continue your sentence because satisfied should be in the answer, okay? So, oui, il en est content. Negative form, non, il n'en est pas content. So, same thing, en stays before the verb, and then you've got the first part of the negation, ne, but then E uh, is going away. All right? Oui, il en est content. Non, il n'en est pas content. Est-ce que Frédéric parle de son chef? Oui, il en parle. Non, il n'en parle pas. Okay? So, same thing, same concept. Just put it before the verb, okay, when you get the negative form, then you should take this E uh, away from the first part of your negative form. Il n'en parle pas. Est-ce que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Okay, avoir besoin, it's to need, okay. Notre aide, our help. Est-ce que, est que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Same thing here. We don't want to repeat de notre aide. So, oui, il en a besoin. Non, il n'en a pas besoin. All right? And now, let's see how it goes when you construct it with one verb, avec un verbe with two verbs, with two verbs, avec deux verbes, and then if you construct it with one verb composed, like for the passé composé, for instance. So let's see now, avec un verbe, with one verb. So you've got a question. Laurent prend un biscuit. Oui, il en prend un. Non, il n'en prend pas. So remember, we saw that previously, huh? if you've got un biscuit, in that case you've got to state the amount here, un, okay, so in that case it's masculine, un biscuit, so it's un, oui, il en prend un, okay, so you put un before the first verb, non, il n'en prend pas. Laurent prend deux biscuits, oui, il en prend deux. Okay, so in that case, you get to put the amount. Il en prend deux. So it would be the same if, we, if you would have trois biscuits, three. In that case, you would put oui, il en prend trois. But then keep in mind that if you put the negative uh, answer, non, il n'en prend pas. So you don't need to state uh, the amount. Okay, il n'en prend pas. Now, we'll see the same structures but with two verbs. And so... The best way to construct with two verbs, if you want to make examples like that, is to construct that with the near future. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Is going to take a biscuit. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Oui, il va en prendre un. So the interesting thing here is that if you look carefully, you've got first aller here. So the first verb is here. 
And then you've got the second verb here. So it's at the infinitive form because that's the rule in French. When you construct with two verbs, the second one will be at the infinitive. And keep in mind that your pronoun, en, here, should be before the second verb. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that it should be between the two because you could have other things between the two. Okay, it should be before the second verb. Oui, il va en prendre un. Okay, and you get a good example here for the reason why I told you it should be before. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. All right, because here you've got your aller verb va. But then you get the negative form, ne va pas. But then your pronoun should be before the second one. Okay? Il ne va pas en prendre. Let's see now. Laurent va prendre deux biscuits. Answer. Oui, il va en prendre deux. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Okay? So let's see now when you've got a composed verb. So... We just need to put the same sentence at the passé composé form. Laurent a pris un biscuit. Oui, il en a pris un. Okay, so the important thing now is to try to remember that when you've got this form, a pris, even if you've got two parts, well, technically you don't have two verbs, you've got one verb. Okay, so your pronoun en should be before the verb, so it means before a here. Okay, one common mistake is to put this en between the two. Okay, because you tend to think that maybe you get two verbs, but no, 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 no. It's here, okay, il en a pris un. Negative form, il n'en a pas pris. All right. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Laurent a pris deux biscuits. Oui, il en a pris deux. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Le pronom complément Y. So in the previous lesson we saw another pronoun. So it's uh, the pronoun uh, en. Okay, and in that case, in this lesson we'll see le pronom Y. Well, you pronounce it E, of course. So, le pronom Y, we'll say that it can replace un lieu, a place, okay? Or then it can replace la préposition A, and then a noun of thing, and then we'll see how to construct it when you've got a negative form, okay? So, let's see now for a place, un lieu. So, let's see a question. Isabelle va... En Finlande. So, va, remember, it's aller, okay? And then, en Finlande, in Finland. Isabelle va en Finlande. So, of course, you will have many options to answer to this question. The first one would be maybe the more logical. Oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. So, you just take all the elements that you had in the question and then you answer with that. Of course, in many situations, we won't, because French people like to use pronouns when it's possible. So the first option that we would have is to uh, avoid repeating Isabelle. Okay? So, elle va en Finlande. All right? And the other option we would have would be to avoid repeating this en Finlande. Okay? So it's a place. It's a country, okay? And in that case, it does mean that it would be possible to use this Y, so I, you pronounce it I, okay? So, oui, elle, I, va. So keep in mind that it's a pronoun, and then it should be here, just before your verb, okay? Elle, I, va. All right, so, oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. Oui, elle va en Finlande. Oui, Elle y va. Okay, so let's see another example now. So if you're using a name of a town, because previously we had a country, and now it's a town, and so it's Paris, okay? Isabelle va à Paris? So it's a question. Of course, you can answer like we saw previously. Oui, Isabelle va à Paris. 
first option, repeat everything, no problem. Second option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle, oui, elle va à Paris. And then, last option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and then Paris, oui, elle y va. All right? And now, it's a place, cinéma, okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Repeat everything. Second one, you just don't want to repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle est au cinéma. All right. Third one, just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. All right. Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Oui, elle est au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. Second situation when we can use this pronoun i or y, it's when you replace it. When you replace this preposition a and then a noun of thing. Let's see now. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense, pense is to think, à son examen, exam, okay, to think about. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense à son examen? First option, repeat everything. Oui, Isabelle pense à son examen. Second option, you just don't repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle pense à son examen. Third option, you don't repeat Isabelle. And same thing for à son examen. So, oui, elle y pense. All right? Same concept, remember, y should come before the verb. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis so in that case, remember, it's O, but then O is clearly the combination of the preposition A and then the article LE tennis, THE, okay? So when you combine these two, you get this O tennis. So still, it does give you the information that it is the preposition which is modified. So still, it's possible to use this pronoun, OUI, Isabelle joue au tennis. Repeat everything. Second one, oui, elle joue au tennis. And the last one, oui, elle y joue. All right? So you can see that it's, it's, it's quite short. It's quite short, but it's quite useful because you don't need to repeat all the things that were stated in the, in the question. Okay? So remember, as usual, the pronoun should come before the verb. All right? So now we'll see how to construct these sentences with the pronoun Y, but then when you're using this negative form, okay? Sorry, est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis? First option, oui, elle y joue. Second, non, elle n'y joue pas. All right, so negative form should be before the pronoun here. Okay, and then as usual, remember the n followed by a vowel. They don't really get along, so a uh, should go away. So you take it away and you get ni, joue, and after the verb, you put your pa form. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, elle y est. Non, elle n'y est pas. Same thing, okay? Negation here before your pronoun, but then a uh, is going away, and then pa after your verb. Okay, so let's see now how you construct it with one verb. Alexandre va au concert. Oui, il y va. Non, il n'y va pas. Okay, so no changes from what we saw previously. Okay, so before your verb and then here when you get the negative form, your ne is coming before the pronoun and then your pa is coming after your verb. Okay, when you get two verbs now. Alexandre va aller au concert. So it looks a bit strange, sorry about that, is going to go at the concert. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's just, just to show you how it works and I don't want to, to, to change the, the sentence, okay? So, oui, il va y aller. Okay, so you can see here now that this pronoun y should be before the second verb, okay? 
il va y aller. Negative form, non. Il ne va pas. Ok, so your negative form is before and after the first verb. And that's the key thing. Ok. And then your pronoun is coming after, well, before, sorry, your, your second verb. Ok, so your pronoun e should be always before your second verb. Ok. And now, let's see how it will work if we've got a compo compost tense, like uh, tense like um, aller here, and it's at the passé composé form. So, Alexandre est allé au concert. Ok, it's the past tense. Oui, il y est allé. Ok, so keep in mind that even if you've got two parts here, ok, it's only one verb. Huh? It's the verb aller at the passé composé, ok, so it's composed, so we've got two elements, but still it's one verb, so it means that your pronoun Y should be before, il, i, et, aller, alright, and then the tricky thing, normally it's the negative form at the passé composé, look, non, il, so you put first the negative part, so ne, Obviously, this E uh, is going away because you've got a vowel, okay, as usual. Il n'y est, and then you put, as we saw previously in uh, Unit 5, or I don't remember, I guess it was Unit 5 when I introduced the passé composé, you put this PA here between être and your participe passé form, okay? So, non, il n'y est pas allé. All right. Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, leçon A. And in this lesson we'll work together on the adverbs, les adverbes. And to be more precise, we'll see three cases. The first one will be with an adjective, an adverb. Second situation will be with un verbe. And then the last one will be with une phrase. Okay, so let's see that. Right now, the first case we'll discover or we'll work on will be with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so let's see. The idea would is normally that the adverb should be placed, adverb placé, devant, before the adjective or the other adverb. Okay, so if you've got a structure with one adverb and one adjective, your adverb should be placed before the adjective. If you've got two adverbs, then this one should be before the second one. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, first example, ce thé est trop chaud. Okay, ce thé, thé is tea, of course, and then here we've got the demonstratif. This tea is too hot. Okay, so we've got the adjective show here, and then this trop should be before the adjective. Okay. So it's quite easy. Uh, another possibility here, you've got two adverbs. So this one, trop, to, and then rapidement, well, fast, okay? And then parler is to talk. Il parle trop rapidement. Okay, so obviously this trop, uh, too fast, uh, should be before rapidement. Okay? And then, last example, ce film est Assez intéressant. Ce film est assez, assez, enough, intéressant, interesting. Okay, so assez comes before intéressant. All right, so remember, if you've got one adverb, then you should put it before the adjective or the second adverb. All right, so let's see now how you will construct it if you have a verb. So the rule goes like that. L'adverbe est placé, is placed, so the adverb is placed en général, in general, so that's quite important in French because of course we've got exceptions all the time, we will have exceptions in French, but en général, okay, après, so after the verb, okay, adverbe placé en général après le verbe, so let's see how it goes now. Je... Lis, lire, lire is to read, okay, so it's the present form, je lis, I read, rapidement, okay, so fast, je lis rapidement, so you can see that this rapidement, fast, comes after your verb here, lire, 
OK? Second example now. Elle parle, parlez to talk, doucement. OK? Quietly. Elle parle doucement. Same thing here. Your adverb is coming after your verb. All right? And then the last one. Il conduit. Conduire is to drive. Il conduit très bien, very well, sa nouvelle voiture, his new car. Il conduit très bien sa nouvelle voiture. So, as you can see here as well, this très bien, very well, is coming after the verb conduire, to drive. All right? So, remember, the adverb is placed in general after the verb. Okay? And then... Be careful, of course, if you construct it at the passé composé tense. So remember, we saw that previously. You should check the unit 5 if you want to know how to construct this passé composé. But then, for the passé composé, we will have, of course, some exceptions. The exceptions are assez, enough, beaucoup, a lot, bien, well, déjà, already, mal, bad, mieux, better, trop, too, too much, too, okay, toujours, always, and then presque, almost, okay, so assez, Beaucoup, bien, déjà, mal, mieux, trop, toujours, presque. So, try to remember them and then in the next page I will show you how they change. So if you take this trop, remember it was too much. So, je parle trop, I talk too much. So, if we've got the, the present form as we do here, basically it does respect the rule as we saw previously, so it comes after the verb. Okay, je parle trop. But then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, okay, so remember, passé composé, you've got avoir or être, and then after that you get this participe passé form, all right? So, you will have to put this adverb trop, between the two here, j'ai trop parlé, all right, let's see now another example, il se repose, se reposer to re is to rest, okay, il se repose beaucoup, a lot, and then if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, il s'est beaucoup Reposé. All right? Il s'est beaucoup reposé. So remember, present here, present form, you've got this adverb, it's coming after the verb, but then here, it must be here, so between the two. Okay? Another example. Je dors mal. So dormir, it's to sleep. Okay? Mal, bad. Passé composé form, j'ai mal dormi. So same thing. Doesn't come after, but it's right here. Okay? Elle sourit toujours. Sourire, to smile, toujours, always. Present form, elle sourit toujours. And then, passé composé form, elle a toujours souri. Alright? And now, let's see if you want to make a sentence. Because... You will have to remember that in some cases, well, the place of the adverb can change. A variable. Okay? So let's see. You've you got an example here. Malheureusement, so malheureusement means unfortunately. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Perdre, it's to lose. Okay? Ses clés, her keys. Okay? And it's the passé composé form. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses Ses clés. Okay, so that's one option. So you can start here, as you can see. You start with the adverb, and then you continue your sentence. 
all right but then it would be possible as well to change the order and to start like elle a perdu ses clés malheureusement okay so you can see that it's possible to start with the adverb or then you can end with it as well so it's possible to move the adverb in this case it doesn't need to be at the right beginning of the sentence okay we'll see another example récemment récemment means recently il a décidé okay décidé to decide de changer to change de travail travail is work okay récemment il a décidé de changer de travail okay and it will be the same here if you look carefully you can start with il a décidé de changer de travail so the same portion that we had here you can start with it and then you put récemment at the end okay so in some structures well keep in mind that it's possible whether to start with the adverb or that to end with the adverb if you want okay uh, well it's for, <laughs> for once it's quite easy in French all right okay so I hope it was clear so this was the first lesson of unit uh, seven unit set if you want more lessons well you can find them here and then the website is waiting for you imagier.net have a great day bye bye